Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. And I'm Rob Dew. Today's date is Tuesday, May 3rd, 2016. And here's a look at what's coming up. Tonight, Glenn Beck says America is done. And he's asking for divine intervention to stop Donald Trump. When you mock that, we're done. Then, as the Republican primary season winds down, there is but one true frontrunner. Like it or not, Donald Trump has a commanding lead. Yet there trailing in the distance is Ted Cruz and John Kasich. Will this finally be the death nail in the Cruz campaign's political coffin? Or will Ted Cruz continue to wander around the countryside like a dead zombie in search of more delegates? Live coverage and analysis of the Indiana primary begins right now on the InfoWars Nightly News. Welcome to our live coverage here on the InfoWars Nightly News of the Indiana GOP primary. Now, we've been told for a couple of weeks that none of the primaries in the Northeast mattered. Trump won six in a row. Cruz lost five of the six, all six, uh, and he came in third place on five of those six. But we were told that didn't matter because the 57 votes tonight, Rob, were going to be the ones that really mattered. They really matter. And this was, it, this was it. I mean, you know, Ted Cruz has been telling people all week that... Uh, this is the final, the most important thing. We've got uh, Glenn Beck uh, doing fasts, and we're going to talk about that Let's aspect of Drudge. it. Bring up Drudge Report. It's got the headline right now. Uh, yeah. Trump, Indiana, 53%. Cruz at 36. Kasich at a whopping 8. Wow. And then I, I, the big news, though, I think, of the night is Sanders, who was not in the lead, is now taking the lead. Yeah, that is interesting. So the Democrat race might actually be more interesting to watch unfold tonight. But what we've seen happen in the last week is we've seen a massive momentum right. towards Cruz. Going and the back to the middle, it's having a fit. Yes, exactly, exactly. Going back to the middle of the month, we saw the last poll where Cruz was positive, and he had a pretty big lead. But that was just an Indiana poll. Uh, it wasn't one of these national polling organizations like NBC or Wall Street Journal, whatever. But what we've seen in the last week or so, we've seen Trump go up from plus two to plus nine to plus fifteen to plus seventeen, and now where is he? Is twenty some odd points ahead yep. of? Uh, Cruz, right? Uh, 27. Yeah, 27. Like. Yeah, yeah. So he's um, he's got a substantial lead, and that's consistent with what we've been seeing happening. And I said, when we were watching the Dreamer riots that you guys were covering out in California, I said, that's it. Yeah. Okay, you're going to see him really surge now. And in he the surged in, New in California. Yeah. California's oh, yeah, he'd already surged in the Northeast. Now. But they were telling us, don't worry, you know, that's just the Northeast. That's not real Republican territory. That's what they... The uh, Never Trump talking uh, conservative radio and, and uh, press have been saying, uh, don't pay any attention to that. So I think this is very significant. And I think when we look at the way the delegates are going to be allocated tonight, uh, it's kind of interesting because we've got 57 delegates there in Indiana. There's going to be 27 that are going to be allocated as a winner-take-all at the state level. So the guy that comes across uh, Which first... Which Cruz will get him, right? Yeah, that's right. He'll get him later. He'll get him next week when nobody's paying any attention. Right. He'll sneak in the back door and grab him. But for the first uh, round of the convention, uh, Trump will most likely, unless there's some kind of uh, massive uh, flip of the voting machines here, he's going to get 27 because he's going to win at the state level. Then they have another 27 that are allocated at the congressional district level. And they're not allocated proportionately. So it's winner take all at each of the nine congressional uh, 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 districts. And uh, each of those are going to have three delegates given to the winner. So that's 27 total. Most likely he will win the vast majority of those as well. And then the RNC reserves three for themselves. They keep 5% of the delegates for themselves. Oh, okay. That's their cut yeah. off the top to start with. And then Cruz comes in the back door and starts playing and starts his taking games. More and That's more. right. And we've got, we've got more on that. You know, you know uh, on Sunday, we had a caller who was a Virginia delegate said, hey, there, there was a bunch of hanky-panky going on here. They just pushed anybody who was for Trump out. And she was a Cruz supporter. And today it came out the, the governor of Virginia wasn't even allowed to be a delegate, just like we saw Jan in Brewer. In Arizona, yeah. Right, Jan Brewer didn't yeah. get to be uh, a delegate because she was uh, supportive of Trump. And see, so that's the key thing. And they say, well, you know, this is just politics. He wasn't there. He didn't have a good ground game. It's like, look, when you take the governor of Arizona, who's been to the last five conventions, and you remove her mysteriously from the ballot, you don't even allow her name to appear on the ballot. Right, right. Okay, there's something other than just a good ground game going on, okay? It's total baloney. 
But let's get into what came out today on Fox News. This just came out from Media Matters. Alex texted me this. Do you have the article? I don't yeah, have the I do. You got the Media yeah. Matters article. Give Fox that News headline. host says Trump is pivoting into the Alex Jones presidency with his <laughs> conspiracy theories. There we go. Okay, so they're going back and forth. They're talking about what's happening. And Greg Gutfeld says, well, I think we're missing the biggest story of the day. Imagine if Hillary Clinton claimed that Bernie Sanders had a role in the killing of Bobby Kennedy. We would all be going crazy right now. Yeah, because there's no evidence of that. Exactly. Place. But there is some about this other story, and we'll talk about that later on. He says, but what we have here, are we about to achieve a historical first in electing the first conspiracy freak president? Is this the pivot we've been talking about? He's not pivoting for presidential. He's pivoting to Alex Jones. There we go. Why isn't this news, he asks. Yeah. Okay. He exactly. says, these guys are crazy. Well, you know, we had this uh, Wayne Madsen story. Going back to the middle of April, April. yeah, and April actually 7th. Wayne had done a story on uh, Wayne Madsen reports back in February showing some of this data. Now, when this isn't when when Donald Trump said this on a call in to uh, one of the Fox shows earlier, he said uh, he started talking about it, and the, and the host there said, "Oh, you know, there's some photo that they dug up that has a resemblance to Ted Cruz's dad." It's not just that. If you go back and you look at the article that we've got at Infowars.com, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence. It's circumstantial, but there's a lot of circumstantial evidence. And I have said, and you've heard me say this in the office, from the very beginning, I said, look, why are we, get, why are we constantly getting these people that have tenuous connections with citizenship into this country who also have tenuous relationships with the CIA, like Barack Obama, his grandparents were some of the founding members and of the, the CIA. Yeah, and Bush the Bushes. Exactly. And so then we got this guy whose dad is there in, the, in Cuba uh, with Castro and all this, as all that stuff is happening, and somehow he mysteriously comes to Texas and gets in the oil business, okay? I said from the very beginning, I suspect that they had some CIA connections. I didn't have any information. I didn't research it like Wayne Madsen did. But there is a lot more than simply a photograph on this. Right. There, there definitely is. And we talked about it. We had Roger Stone on to talk about it. And that story was, was what, two weeks ago that we had Roger yeah. Stone on? Now, Trump talks about it today on a, or today or yesterday on a, uh, on a show, on a, on, a, on a radio show. And so now... Finally, Fox News is going with it now, the, now that Trump has mentioned it. Yeah. So Trump seems to think there's enough evidence there to mention it. I don't think he would say that if he didn't think there was enough evidence to link Ted Cruz's father to uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. I think there's a lot of evidence there. There is a, a, a good resemblance in that photograph. However, you, you go back and you look at some of the other information that Wayne Madsen pulled up. He talks about how uh, Robert Blakely, who was the chief counsel on the House Special Committee on Assassinations, Affirmed that the men seen with Oswald in this photograph that were passing out pamphlets of the trademark in New Orleans on August 9th were never identified. 1993, he says, well, there's one person in there we've never been able to identify. And then he brings in connections that have a guy who was known to work with uh, Guy Bannister, had a private investigation agency. He had been an FBI agent. Uh, he was retired, but he continued to work for the FBI, continued to work for the uh, CIA he was in the same building where this uh, Fair Play for Cuba committee, this pro-Castro committee that Oswald was working with, and that was essentially a, a beard for them to uh, run anti-Castro mm -hmm. uh, operations. But they were in the same building, even though one of them had an entrance on one street and the other one had an entrance on another street. If you look at it, it's so not looks like different addresses. Different. Exactly. Right. All the kind of stuff you typically see. And the fact that as... Uh, you have uh, 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 Jim Garrison start his investigation in 1963 of the Kennedy assassination saying, hey, look, there was a lot of CIA, a lot of Cuban exiles here, uh, all working, doing mysterious stuff. And he began that investigation. That was the one that Oliver Stone turned into the JFK film. As uh, Garrison starts to conduct his investigation, uh, Ted Cruz's dad leaves town and goes to Canada. Right. Okay. There's a lot of stuff here, folks. If you want to look at this stuff, again, it's circumstantial evidence, but there's a lot of circumstantial evidence. The New Orleans to, to Canada pipeline, it's every, that's, that's all people do. They, they live in New Orleans and they go straight to Canada. Yeah, that's, yeah. That he also points out, this is another thing that Wayne pointed out. Okay, Rafael Cruz, senior, okay, I, I don't know, maybe they got a different middle name, but uh, Ted's name is Rafael as well. He says, in 1957, Rafael Cruz left Cuba for the U.S. Cruz claims that he fought with Castro against the fascist government of Batista, but he soured on the revolution. However, Cruz left Cuba two years before the Castro revolution. So there you go. I mean, you start to see some conflicts with known facts. Mm -hmm. You start to see some connections with some known operatives. 
And it's there's a lot of circumstantial evidence. But hey, you bring it up on Fox News Radio uh, during a phone interview, and suddenly you're an Alex Jones kook. And this is information we brought out two, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, plenty of time to be vetted. Mm -hmm. And uh, you well, know, they laughed at him. They laughed at Donald Trump about the 28 secret pages. Exactly. Okay. And now you have the CIA head going, "Oh, uh, all those 28 pages are mischaracterized and they're unvetted, and all mm -hmm. all these other." Adjectives mm -hmm. used to to. He just did that this weekend. The, right. He just did that this weekend. That's yeah. called damage control, people. If you don't know what that is, it's called damage control. Well, he is trying to control <laughs> the damage to be done to him because Brennan is involved uh, up to the hip with this. Sure. Uh, so the uh, uh, the connections with Bondar and the Saudis and CIA, all that stuff will start to unravel if we see that. But of course, also, you know, when uh, the first time Donald Trump talked about that before it was picked up. By 60 Minutes, and they started talking to Bob Graham and all the people, Democrats mm -hmm. and Republicans. Who were on the committee. Yeah, who were on the committee. All these people who were the creme de la creme of the intelligence and military community, according to the establishment. These people were all calling for the 28 pages to be released. They went on 60 Minutes, and then everything changed. But weeks before that, you had the Wall Street Journal, the very first thing. What they do? They tie. They said, look at this. Donald Trump talking about the missing 28 pages. Uh, 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 uh. Alex Jones. Yeah. He turned into an Alex Jones clown. Okay. That was National Review two weeks before 60 Minutes. That now all of a sudden it's legit. Okay. Except now you've got uh, Brennan saying, oh, this wasn't vetted. The FBI didn't do their work properly. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what you always get. And, and yeah. you know, this reminds me, you guys, dur during uh, dinner, we were having a pretty interesting conversation between you and Biggs were talking about what's going on at West Point. And yeah. I think we have Joe Biggs and Jakari Jackson in our brand new refurbished studio and uh, Studio B, Studio C. I don't know, that'd be Studio B, actually. Uh, so let's go to those guys now and let's pick up that conversation. And before we go to break, because then we're going to go to an interview we had, uh, I did earlier today with a, um, I guess, a fighter of social justice warriors, we could call him. That's right. He was, That's right. He, he, hopefully he's going to put out some information out there that could help you, especially those of you in California who are going to be dealing with the social justice warrior onslaught in the coming weeks as we lead up to the June 7th uh, California primary. Donald Trump's going to be making a lot of pit stops there, which you know what's going to happen. We're going to see, I guess, more property destroyed in the name of love, That's more right. people getting beat up in the name of love. And, and let me say this about that, because okay. this is another conversation we were having. Uh, as I was on my way home Sunday night, I was listening to a radio broadcast out of Chicago. And this is a guy, one of the fellows likes to say, well, we're objective press and we sit right on the fence. We don't take sides. And he's got people from uh, four different presidential campaigns, two Republicans, two, re two Democrats. And he's saying that he was in uh, California. And uh, as he pulled up to that area, he saw them block it. There was a, a traffic jam. And they had a carload of Mexicans in front of him. And he said they had F Trump written all over their car. And then they jumped out and they started right, spray painting other cars with that same stuff. And he says, as we pulled up to the rally, it was a riot by these dreamers. And he goes, they had a broadcast of what Donald Trump was saying on the inside. And he was talking to all these people who were victims of illegal aliens who had come across. And he goes, as that was playing over the loudspeakers, you had all this happening out there. And he goes, it was pretty amazing. He goes, is that fair game for Donald Trump to talk about that? You know, <laughs> to talk about the story? Because you know, people on the left use stories about people who've died from gun violence to push gun all control. The time. Should yeah. he be talking about these stories? And I said, well, yeah, I guess it's pretty good for him and it's fair game for that. But, you know, he, he caused all this because he went to Chicago. He went to the university where Bill Ayers is. And that triggered all this because you can't go there because Bill Ayers owns that. That's it's like good, saying the know. Central Park jogger who got right. raped. She should never have gone into Central Park because that's that, where rapists go. That's right. You should know better than <laughs> it's that. It's totally ridiculous. I, but that's the world we live in. Hey, do we have uh, Jakari and Biggs in the other studio, in Studio B? Hey, hey, we are here. All right. So, uh, Joe Biggs, you guys were talking today about, about this, uh, what's going on in West Point. And uh, basically, they're feminizing the Army. This is all part of this, you know, turn turn the Army into a bunch of females wearing high heels, all that. What's your, uh, what's your take on what's going on in West Point? I mean, it's, it's an interesting thing. I mean, we've already seen what the Obama administration has done thus far to our military, having our soldiers walking around in red high hills, having these social justice warrior classes, you know, uh, in the military, which is something that these guys should not be focused on. These are soldiers, and their job is to be in combat and to fight terrorists, not to sit here and find out what the new social justice warrior trending topics are and now we have west point adding another female in there one who has no experience in combat whatsoever to train and get these guys ready for the rigors of combat 
when this female herself has never been in combat at all. Yeah, they, they have uh, somebody, the commandant, who is in charge of the military training. They have a dean who's in charge of academic training. On Friday, they announced that the dean was that they're going to appoint is a female. She's a social science professor, as you would expect, okay, because this is social engineering. The commandant that is female, five foot one, uh, and she's going to be teaching combat. She was the, appointed in January of this year. And now the two of them report to a superintendent who is still male, and we've got to get that changed because that is absolutely sexist that they would uh, report to a male there. Exactly. So. I mean, we're already bringing in females now to to lead rangers in combat missions. It's a complete and total joke, especially when you have the guy who runs the training of the ranger school coming out and saying, yeah, we're going to have a female ranger regardless, which means that they have dropped the standards, ignored standard operating procedure, and are doing this to be politically correct. We should not have any kind of PC in our military. That's one place it does not belong. And it, it, you're going to put people at risk. I don't want some 110-pound girl as a firefighter who can't even pick me up to come save me if I'm passed out from smoke inhalation, much less I'm here with a whole bunch of guys or we're, we're taking on an you know, enemy target. We got like 300 guys attacking us, and I get shot, and little two, you know, 110-pound Nancy's back there, Private Nancy, is trying to run up here and grab me. What's going to happen? She's going to get shot. I'm going to get shot. The more people are going to come over here because they're going to see a woman go down and there's going to be more people. It's ridiculous. It just doesn't work out. Well, everything has to be subordinated to their social uh, agenda that they've got going on here. And that's precisely well, hope, what's happening. You know, Stay with us. We've got to take a break, Joe. We're going to be right back with more live coverage. We're going to be Indiana taking your primary. calls, too. So stand right. by for that. There's a very important question that needs to be answered. Will humanity survive? And to look at that threat, we have to ask another question. What is the number one obstacle to human beings and our species surviving and becoming a type one civilization that isn't just dependent on this planet? You could say that it's changes in the heavens, suns going supernova, uh, tectonic earthquake and volcano events, nuclear weapons, genetic engineering. But if you look at the race, the acceleration of technological development, I think the biggest threat overall is humanity not pacing ourselves and merging with artificial intelligence. So they're trying to end humanity as if it's a good thing and create this new species. Talk about mad scientists. And there have been several new articles on this just the last few weeks. DARPA is testing implantable chips in soldiers' brains is one of them. Another uh, just came out in mid-April. Rich Americans seeks black market brain implants in bid to plug into artificial intelligence matrix. And they're going to go through the dangerous surgeries of being hooked up, not just with a few wires, but with thousands of connections total, to the brain, to an AI computer to try to merge consciousness. My father, a physician, recently went back to continuing education, part of keeping his medical license, and he brought me back some of the literature they gave them. This is from the state medical board right here in Texas, that soon you'll have to have a DNA chip to get a prescription. Not just that chips are going to be on the pills and medicines themselves, but now you're going to have to give your blood, basically every time, a tiny prick, into a DNA chip database that tracks everything going on in your body as well as your genes. In this short report, we're only scratching the surface. And the big issue here is things they denied 20, 30 years ago that were going on, they're now admitting today. What are they doing that we don't know about? We need to have a debate about our species. We need to understand that the global elite have decided we're obsolete and are moving towards a robotic future where there's no place for humanity, as Bill Joy wrote over 15 years ago for Wired Magazine in his article, Why the Future Doesn't Need Us. And the numbers are in. Screen time all the television, all the prescription drugs, this modern culture is killing us, our IQs are dropping, people are becoming more and more ignorant, 
society is unraveling and falling apart. So we know that the fruits of this high-tech poison tree are literally killing us. The answer is getting back to healthy living, gardening, spending time with our families, less screen time, and also using compounds that Mother Nature has produced that are known to boost our natural abilities. Humans have built an incredible world. We can change our environment. We do have that magic spark. But the elite think we're ugly and bad and have decided it's time that humans be thrown on the ash heap of history. We have taken some of the compounds that Mother Nature has produced and gotten the cleanest, purest sources of it and put it together in Brain Force, one of the most highly reviewed nootropic brain boosters on the market today that has an incredibly affordable price. Check out Brain Force today and other game-changing compounds like X2 Survival Shield at InfoWarsLife.com. Again, that's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. Now, our next guest really needs no introduction if you've been a follower of the Alex Jones channel uh, and what's going on lately with all these social justice warriors. You can see the video, anti-Trump protesters go berserk, and that is Owen Schroyer right there talking to a large gathering of anti-Trump protesters and basically by himself talk them down into a corner. So he's going to Basically, what, what I invited him on here t today is, you know, California is coming up, the primary. There's going to be at least a dozen Trump rallies in between now and then. So this is for people who are pro-First Amendment, pro-freedom of speech, even pro-Trump. These are He's going to give you some tips on what you can do. He's over my shoulder right now. It's Owen Schroyer. He's going to tell you what you could do against these social justice warriors. Owen, how's it going today? It's going good. I'm honored to be on Infowars.com. You guys are probably my favorite news source. When I got the call from you, I was ecstatic. So glad to be here today. Well, let me tell you, I was more than impressed, and we should have got you on a lot sooner. I was really impressed with how you stood your ground. You had facts. You weren't afraid to be loud and and just you know express your opinions out there in a group you know that was definitely hostile to what you had to say. Well, and the thing was, I, I didn't go there to do any street debating. I just went there to see Donald and hear what he had to say. And it just reached a point where I couldn't help myself. I was sick of being called a racist. I was sick of being called crazy. And I guess there's just a little rebel rousing soul inside of me that whenever I see an all-you-can-eat buffet of social justice warriors, <laughs> I can't help myself. But, you know, what it came down to at the end of everything, as you said, was they were basically backed into a corner. All I had to do was stand my ground. And you can, I don't know how many knockouts I had in that, um, little 20 minute session there, but they just come, they embarrass themselves and then they disappear because they have no depth to their argument. So I actually felt like I was not my most coherent, not my most eloquent that day, but it's tough to be when people are shouting racist at you and F Trump and, and whatnot. And well, I, I, I agree with you there. Voice because a crowd gathered around me. I mean, there were probably 200 people gathered around witnessing this thing. So I started raising my voice and it really became um, quite a moment. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. You can't fault yourself, you know, looking back, oh, I should have said this, I should have said that. I do that, too, looking at, at videos that I that I put out there and produce. I, oh, I should have said this, should have brought this up. But wait, at least you're out there, you're in the moment, you're getting in the game. And I got to see this shirt. Show me this shirt that you're you're wearing. It, it looks right. like a, a knockoff of Beavis and Butthead. It says, are you kidding me? And it's got, uh, well, there's Aid Skrillex and Carl the Cuck, the guys who made themselves famous by sticking their feet in their mouths, essentially, right? Well, this is a man who claimed that he'd done his research and then referred to Mao and Lenin as capitalists. Um, so right then and there, he pretty much trumped himself. Well, they did and get then, funding uh, from the globalists, though. So I guess in that way, they were getting capital from the globalists who wanted to take down these other countries. He doesn't even know what capitalism is. He I probably doesn't know what globalism is. He's a, I call these people the hearsay mafia. They don't do any research. They don't have any depth to their stance. They just hear and then they say, I don't know what their sources are exactly, maybe MSNBC, you know, but they're the hearsay mafia and that's why they're so easy to defeat in a street debate because they have no depth. Well, let's get right into it. Let's get into tips that you could give other people out there, especially in California, who are going to be going up against these social justice right. warriors. Um, aside from carrying a camera and having it ready and to record at all times and plenty of space, what else, what other advice could you give people out there? Well, yeah, and that is key because the only reason, there were probably three or four other moments that day that were very similar to the moment that Josh Owens captured. So 
having a camera to capture it is very powerful if you want to get the viral video, if you want to get this illustrated to millions of people. Um, other than that, you know, if you're an informed individual and if you're courageous enough to stand your ground despite people yelling at you, um, now we're seeing this devolve into spitting at you, throwing eggs, whatever it may be. If you're just courageous and you stand your ground and you know your stuff, you're going to defeat these people every time. Now, I'll be perfectly honest, Rob, because you wanted to talk about what's going on in California. What I experienced in St. Louis, honestly, I think is going to pale in comparison to what people are going to experience in California because these protesters have gotten much more aggressive. So what I would suggest doing, and I'm planning on going to Cleveland, and this is kind of my plan, take a stance that is less aggressive. Let them come after you. Let them expose themselves for what they really are, which is the ignorant sheeple, the walking dead. You know what most of these people are going to say because they're brainwashed. So you ask them, oh, what's wrong with Trump? What's the first response you're going to get? He's racist. He's a misogynist. Okay. He's a xenophobe. He's sexist. He hates all Muslims. Me, can you give me one example? Can you give me one example? And you hear the same thing. It's, are you kidding me? It's, oh my gosh. Oh, I don't have to, you know, they're, they can't give an example. And there might even be examples. You could probably give hundreds of examples, but these people have none. And that's what it really comes down to. If you go out there and you can get them in the ring with you in actual a civil a civil debate, I mean, I know that it was very hostile in the streets of St. Louis that day, but it was civil. Nobody was violent. Um, the one guy spit on me, but I think that's just because he was so out of control. I don't even think he meant to. Um, but I'm expecting it to be a lot worse with these people in California, and they might be even more ignorant than the people I experienced in St. Louis. So you really need to come from a calm and collective point that tries to lure them into the ring. Basically, you need to get them to play your game because we can't play their game. I'm not going to walk around in the streets chanting racist or F this or F that, throwing eggs and spitting at people. That's not our game. Our game is a civil discussion. Our game is the information war. That's our game. So try to bring these people into the ring, have them engage in the information war, and you'll walk out undefeated like a lion in the ring with a bunch of gazelles. Yeah, I, and you totally illustrated that. I mean, you stood your ground for 20 minutes. Most of the interactions I was able to record were way less than that. I mean, five, six minutes at a time, maybe even 30 seconds. But just standing up and standing in the ring is one way to defeat these people because they don't have an argument. When I was in uh, San Francisco, just trying to talk to people, once you'd ask them a couple questions, oh, F you, I'm out of here, and they would run off. Right. I'm not here to debate, I'm here to cause trouble, is actually what one guy said, he had a green handkerchief on, and you know, of course he covered his face as soon as things started to get crazy. So I totally agree with you, that is, uh, what do you think in general, what's going on? It, it, are we really living in idiocracy now? I mean, these people, I don't know where they come from or where they get their ideas. Right, and I'm glad you said that. Rob, this is something that I struggle with every day. And we know the whys, okay? We can sit here and we can point out whys. There's fluoride in the water. Uh, the mainstream news is basically just a propaganda arm of the globalist regime. So, you know, beyond there's other factors as well, but just those two factors are enough for us to... <clears throat> kind of understand how these people got that way. You know, so there's, there is a chance for some people, but these people on the streets, I'm not sure if there's a hope for them. I think that they're completely brainwashed. They're basically just an empty vassal of brainwashing. And I don't know if there's hope for these people. Well, I tell you what, one thing we have to do is illustrate what they're doing so we educate others out there who still can be reached. And I want to commend you for doing it. Go ahead and plug your, uh, your website and your YouTube channel. I know you, you like to talk politics on YouTube. Yeah, so I've got a YouTube channel. It's Owen Schroyer, the name of, it's really a podcast, but I do uh, screen sharing as well. I share the news stories because, you know, what we like to do is just have facts to back up our arguments, just this thing that we do in the information war. But I go on, I usually do about an hour, two hours. The name of the channel is Owen Schroyer. The name of the show is Engage Liberty. You can follow me on Twitter. All I do is Owen. That's where I post updates uh, for when I'm going to be live. And uh, if you like the broadcast, if you like the energy I bring to the air and you want to support it, go to CameronLeeWorldwide.com and you can get these t-shirts. 
We already talked about the Are You Kidding Me? Age Skrillex, Carl the Cuck shirt, but I've got other shirts on there. I've got a Trump card shirt. Uh, I'm trying to make something for myself, trying to fund myself. Uh, that's what Trump's doing as well. So that's true Americana. That's true independence. And that's what I think needs to be resurrected in this country. And that's getting in the ring. And as we go to break, I want to share with you guys some of the best of Balina Tetas. That's going to be her new nickname as we travel the social justice warrior uh, ecosystem out there. We now have Belina Tetas out there, so we're going to go to her as we go to break. Thanks for joining us, Owen. Thanks, guys. Salute to the Info Warriors out there. All right. All right, Rob, do with Infowars.com. You would think this would be a little block party scenario, but if you look behind me, there are mounted police. There are police in riot gear. People have taken over the streets of Costa Mesa. So are you with, with the group that was running around topless earlier? So are you guys here for Trump? Gender equality? No, I'm with myself. Welcome back to our live coverage here on InfoWars Nightly News. And of course, as uh, George Will would put it, this is the latest episode in a protracted process. But that process has just now contracted. We've had Ted Cruz announce that he is dropping out of the race. Ted Cruz has tapped out. One of the best things he's done all, <laughs> all election season long. In fact, this is what they say from Politico. Ted Cruz is quitting the presidential race, according to campaign manager Jeff Rowe, ending one of the best organized campaigns of 2016. But after a series of stinging defeats, left Donald Trump as the only candidate capable of clinching the nomination outright. He really didn't have anywhere to go. No. He had painted himself into a corner. He said all these states in the Northeast didn't matter, you know, even though he lost every one of them. And as I point out, in five of the six, he came in a distant third. He said, ah, it's just the Northeast. And then, but, you know, Indiana, that's, that's God's Midwest, country. Yeah. That's my country. And I guess America is going to hell, according to Glenn Beck. <laughs> and, and Ted Cruz's dad and, yeah. and everybody yeah. else. Uh, I just tweeted, what will Mark Levin, Dana Loesch, and Glenn Beck do now? Um, <laughs> well, we it, know what Mark Levin is doing. And we got this at oh, the top yeah, of the Drudge exactly. Report. Radio host Levin slams Fox News after mm. Cruz lost and says, now I'll be rubbing their own faces and their own feces. Wow. And, of course, we've already seen Glenn Beck rubbing his face in Cheetos last week. Uh, <laughs> just illustrating... That he's not a clown. There you go. And I mean, <laughs> you, you got to hit. Cruz thought, I guess he thought he could do it and he just couldn't pull it off. This is definitely the smartest thing he's done. But the way he changed as a candidate after he started getting those wins, he changed into the attack dog and yeah. it didn't work at all. It just didn't work for him. And he People started courting the it. establishment. And, and exactly. But I think the best thing of him leaving is now we've defeated Jeb Bush twice in this race. He's yeah. lost twice now. Out of one, there's, oh, there's... And, and I shouldn't say that he was courting the establishment, because, look, we all believe yeah. that he was the establishment all along. We talked about the fact that he was been embedded in the Bush administration, you know, 10 plus years ago, whatever. He is a Bush guy. And I believe from the very beginning, he was chosen to be the face of the conservative libertarian side. I think they mm -hmm. believed that they had him there as a hedge, and just in case they couldn't shock and awe everybody with Jeb Bush's massive amounts of money, uh, they would have him as the outsider, and then they could unify the party together with the insider Jeb Bush and the outsider Ted Cruz, regardless of whichever one was on top. Uh, it just didn't work out. Carly was vice president pick for what, three days now? That's right. That's it. And that's one of the most ridiculous things. You know, <laughs> and going back into history and looking at this, we've never had uh, a presidential, a vice presidential candidate uh, chosen this early in oh, yeah. the process. Yeah, but they did it for a reason. You go, yeah, yeah, they did it for a reason. Right. Well, they did it for a reason because they need they need <laughs> someone to be able to lay off all of those Cruz campaign uh, workers. So they already figured <laughs> she was the perfect fit for that. She already did that at uh, HP. They're like, you know, we need Cruz is going to lose us. We need someone to take They're care of They this. take it all the way. Yeah. So we can just make it a I clean mean, Cruz right now is going to sit back, you know, drink some champagne, play with his kids that hate him. And then Fiorina's going to come in, sweep in, and do all the dirty work and fire everyone. So there we you thank go. you for your service, but it's no longer needed. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That is going to well, be Well, it's crazy. quite a race this whole thing has been turned turned up to be. You know, when you think about uh, everybody we've lost, the people who still remain, and my question now is what are they going to do with Casey? Do they have some kind of plan for this guy going forward? Well, he says he has pledged on Tuesday night to stay in the race until a candidate reaches 1,237 bound delegates. Now that word "bound" is pretty interesting because he's still he's still beaten by Rubio. I know, <laughs> and he's not going to win any today. Either. No, he's not. He didn't make the threshold of fifteen percent. No. But you know, the latest uh, stats that we'd seen when it was at fifty-five percent of the vote in, 
uh, they'd already given 45 delegates to Donald Trump out of the 57. Right. And, of course, three of those are not going to be awarded because that goes to the RNC. They kept their 5% of the well, cut. Well, the, re the remaining ones are going to go to the uh, Cruz campaign staffers. That way they have, like, a little consolation prize as they go out. <laughs> Well, I wonder yeah. if they're still going to work on stealing delegates. Or does, does it say he, he says he's dropping out, so he's not even suspending his campaign. Marco Rubio said, I'm suspending my campaign, which doesn't mean he's dropping out of the race. Well, so, now that's the, the lower thirds on, on Fox, so right. we don't know. You know. He is a lawyer, and he does parse the words very, very carefully, Rob. So you know, <laughs> have to be very careful. Uh, I meant I'm suspending of thinking around. about dropping out of the race. That's yeah. what I meant. Yeah. You know, we were talking to uh, Joe and Jakari about what's going on with the feminization of the military, the fact they've got the uh, the number two, and the, well, the two people right underneath the superintendent now are both going to be females, uh, the social engineering that's going on there, and then, of course, the uh, move to have women register for the draft. And I want to read this to you, Joe, because, you know, we had these outrageous comments from George Will over the weekend, and now we've got another outrageous comment. Listen to this. This guy is Richard Cohen. He's writing an op-ed piece for the Washington Post that came out today. And he says, if Donald Trump looked at a demographic profile of his supporters, he would sneer. Of course, now Richard Cohen is going to sneer at him. Yeah. He says they're just disproportionately out of work or not seeking oh. it. If they do have a job, they're probably working with their hands. Maybe something a machine could do better or someone overseas could do cheaper. A large share only have a high school education. Trump, not one for the niceties of political correctness, might call such people losers. No, he's not calling them losers. Those are his supporters, and those are the people that he identifies with. This guy's calling them losers, and he goes on to say, I think there's something else as well. Suckers. He said, in the old days, this is Richard Cohen talking, he said, in the old days, there was yet another term for such a person, cannon fodder. Jobless and poor young men often would drift in the military and stay as long as they could. Now, this is coming from a guy who has supported every war we've had in his lifetime. And he sneers with contempt at the people that our globalist elite have declared economic warfare on and saying, you're nothing but cannon fodder for our foreign wars. And I think people hey, are waking up to this and they're understanding who the real enemies are and they're not abroad, okay? What's his name again so I can backhand him? Richard Cohen. <laughs> Richard, Richard Cohen. Cohen. Yeah. David, 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 when you were talking about <laughs> the uh, jobless drifters, I thought you were talking about the Bernie supporters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got it. You hit the nail right on the head, Jakari. I've, there, I've spent a lots of time with these people yeah. and not... Uh, you know, it looked like maybe there was five jobs between the, the 10,000 of them. There, mm -hmm. There's a oh, hilarious probably. meme out right now that shows a Bernie guy and then a, like a, oh, an yeah. older lady with a Trump. Y did you send and, me that? And, and, you sent me that. Yeah, it says, <laughs> I'll pull the it guy up says, here. the guy threatens to uh, leave America if Donald Trump wins <laughs> presidency. Mom supports Trump to get son out of basement. That's a complete, <laughs> that's the perfect analogy of these people we run into, these social yeah. justice warriors yeah. at every event. Yeah. And I mean, I think the the big issue is though. I mean, look at Trump won in a landslide. There's not, it's not even close now. It looks like Cruz is going up another percentage point. Um, it, you know, it's. Oh no, that was. I'm sorry, that was Sanders and Clinton. And that's there, an interesting story points. now that that Sanders is on top of Clinton, and that's you know that's something that wasn't expected. And I think it's when you look at the uh, delegates, so it's not going to help them very much because in the Democrat Party. They're going to allocate at the state level and at the congressional level, all the delegates are going to be allocated proportionately. So they're going to split them about 50-50. And again, the no difference is going to be the superdelegates. It's going to be the party establishment that's going to decide this. And all of his pleas to their sense of fairness are going to fall on deaf ears. And he's, I mean, yeah. Trump won 15%. That, that's, a, that's a trouncing by yeah. any other oh, name. Yeah. That's right. And, um, you know, the, this is the best... Cruz has shown in six races now, 37% is the best he's well, I'm shown. I'm just glad we don't have to worry about the Zodiac killer continuing to run for, you know, for being president. Well, I knew this was going to, I thought this was going to happen. I thought they all knew it internally because yesterday as I was driving home, I'm clicking through the different channels and trying to hear people. Uh, and the, the typical never Trump media didn't want to mm -hmm. talk about the election. They wanted to talk about other news. And so I thought, oh, let me see what old Mark Levin is saying. So I, I found him on my phone. And uh, he was talking, he says, I am so sick and tired of CNN and Fox News. And he starts talking about the shopping uh, network that he's watching. And says, so like, okay, it, it's over. These guys oh, know it. Levin, Levin was melting down <laughs> early. He was completely just lost his cool earlier. Because I always listen to him right after uh, 
Michael Savage for a minute. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> well, the whole everyone called, it, everyone called into Levin's show and they were all Trump supporters. And Levin was flipping out and screaming and yelling. <laughs> and like you could you could hear the, the tear ducts starting to, you know, ramp well up loved. as they were about to like <laughs> Niagara Falls out of his face. I mean, it, the, yeah. the guy is a loon. Yeah. He's, he's just as bad as Glenn Beck and even worse than Cruz. So schadenfreude, and, and, and when we're talking about what's going on with the military, getting back to that real quickly again, they're going to draft women, they're putting women at the top of West Point, and then we've got Hillary Clinton coming out this weekend and saying, you know, I know how to deal with men that come off of the reservation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's we're gonna take a break here. And uh, was that was uh, Darren coming through on the on the line? No, before? no, no. He had a, okay. he was relaying a message from Alex. I guess Alex is watching, and he and I think he said he was gonna call in at some point. When we come back from break, we're actually gonna have Wayne Madsen pop in to talk about some stories uh, that he's predicted, of course, way before the mainstream media even gets a hold of these. And uh, also, I think we, we need to play that Greg Gutfeld clip. That oh yeah, gutless yeah, we'll play that when we come clip back. talking about how Trump is the conspiracy president now because he talks about truth. All right, we'll be right back. Welcome back to our live coverage of the Indiana primary and the conclusion, we should say, of the GOP primary because we've just had Ted Cruz say that he is pulling out. Wait so a minute, wait a minute. Kasich is still in the race. There's still a chance. <laughs> yeah. There's still a chance. Well, you know, Kasich said a while back, he said, you know, maybe being president isn't the job for me. Maybe <laughs> I'll go back and, you know, work at my son's school or something. And I think that's a career path that exactly. he's consider. Exactly. But, I mean, we're looking at a 17% win, yeah. point win right now with, uh, they're saying 69% of the vote is in. And, uh, and even more importantly, he's going to get all the delegates. Yeah. Uh, except for perhaps three who were the RNC. And that's the key. We have this unrelenting GOP elitist establishment at the top that is not throwing in the towel. We've got everybody else looking at this but uh, and saying there isn't any chance, except I'm not really so sure that these people are going to uh, play along nicely uh, as we look at this. But he's got all, he's pretty much has all of the delegates there in Indiana. And the interesting thing that's happening right now is on the Democrat side, because we've got Bernie Sanders coming up with about a five to six point lead over Hillary Clinton at this point. Very surprising. Yeah, very surprising. But again, it's not going to help him much with the delegates because of the party rules. Uh, the superdelegates are going to be, they're not too far apart from each other if you take out the superdelegates. And uh, he keeps saying that he believes that in sense of fairness that the superdelegates ought to line up with the way the vote, the states went. And he said uh, she's not going to get to the magic number without the superdelegates. And superdelegates ought to, in the sense of democracy, ought to line up with the way the states voted. It's like, uh, no, Bernie, that's not the way they play. <laughs> that's not the way they play, but that is the way it should work. Yeah, it and, is. And it we is. saw Ted Cruz going after uh, Arizona. He was really making a run there. Arizona, Virginia now, which we had a caller on uh, Sunday. We are doing the yeah. Sunday show. And um, but let's get to that Gutfield clip first. Let's hear yeah, that. Yeah, let's play that because now the, the delegate thing is not really up right. in the air. So let's play this uh, breaking news that came out today because today, just as they're going to vote in a radio interview, Donald Trump started talking about this article that Wayne Madsen put together, and uh, we had it about the middle of April on the Infowars.com uh, site, talking about the connections, possible connections between Ted Cruz's father. And the JFK assassination, the group of Cubans that were in New Orleans at the time. Mm -hmm. And Greg Gutfeld had this to say. Well, I, I think we're missing the biggest story of go. the day. Oh, no. Imagine if Hillary Clinton <laughs> claimed that Bernie Sanders had a role in the killing of Bobby Kennedy. We would be going crazy right wait, now. Wait a minute. Yeah, Let's stop that right there. First of all, Bernie Sanders didn't hold a job. During that time. So there's no way he would have been anywhere near California. <laughs> he was up in the mountains of Vermont living in a, a cabin barefoot uh, in a maple syrup farm. So Imagine if somebody said that, that Bernie happened. Sanders was embedded with Che Guevara. Now that I would believe. That, yeah. If they, if they said that he was fighting with the Sandinistas uh, down in Nicaragua, that I would believe. Okay? But into, into mind, mass mind control with, with Sirhan Sirhan? <laughs> nah, I don't think he was into that. But let's continue on, Mr. Gutless, Gutfeld. In the killing of Bobby Kennedy, we would be going crazy right now. Yes. We'd be going wall to yeah. wall. This guy is going but crazy. No, 
have we are we about to uh, uh, achieve a historical first in electing the first conspiracy freak president? I mean, is this the pivot we've been talking about? He's not pivoting from presidential. He's pivoting to Alex Jones. He's pivoting to crazy. And why isn't it news? It's crazy. Why Federal Reserve, it? audit the Fed. That's that's yeah. crazy. It's, it's unusual yeah. that somehow it's not news when Trump does it. It's kind of funny. Well, wait, wait. Will you tell well, the people what you're talking about? What about the national the national choir? Sure yeah, they don't even know what he's talking about. That's yeah. how not clued in these people yeah. are. And I don't know why. Yeah, why is Greg guys, wearing his bow tie? I mean, he looks like a guy that usually wears a bow tie. Uh, oh no, he, he should be. And, and some little, you know, I wear glasses, but he should have the little bitty, <laughs> little bitty man glasses. And hey, look, it, these guys. Like I said in the earlier, it, when Donald Trump started talking about the, the twenty eight pages, declassified the twenty eight pages about the nine eleven. Attack. Audit the Fed. And and right away, Wall Street Journal says, oh, he's putting on, he sounds like an Alex Jones caller. That was the right. very first line in their article. And so here's this guy right here. And you know what? It just, it, when people look at the evidence, that's why the mainstream media hasn't been able to pull out any of their establishment candidates. That's why all the television ads that they spent $150 million They've that lost. Jeb Bush put out there, there was just wasted money because nobody is paying attention to these people. They've lost the attention of the voters, they've lost their credibility. And people keep seeing this stuff come out. And it's like, yeah, there really is something there. Well, and that ties hand in hand with your op-ed. People who work with their hands, like yes. that's a bad thing. Like yeah. knowing how to have manual skills, okay? I put, up a, I put up a partial fence in my backyard over the weekend when I got back from talking to the social justice meatheads. And, you know, it's like, that's bad. Knowing how to use tools is yeah. bad. Yeah. Something that could be done by a robot. You know, pretty soon, buddy, your your job is going to be done by a robot. Uh, Facebook's already looking at algorithms, so and so is Apple News to have robots write news stories. That's right. They're going to try to make everybody obsolete. And of course, part so of what this guy reality. was 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 uh, pissing on these people about was that they didn't have college degrees. And it's like, yeah, and they don't have that debt. You know? And, and a they lot don't. of them are small business owners <laughs> exactly. that work work exactly. for a living. You know? But you know that goes back to to what I've George Will said people. a day or so earlier that you know Republican convention should be sovereign. It shouldn't merely ratify decisions that were made elsewhere, like in elections. Okay, and just because you've got a mere plurality of voters in this episodically uh, recorded protracted process, it's like he's just saying the elections shouldn't matter at all. People like George Will know better than you, and people like Robert Cohen are superior to those people that they send off to die in the wars that they start. And you ought to just shut up and go fight for them. Like there's Gutfield now live. He's probably just, you know, crying like a little girl yeah. on, uh, on Fox News. But, but, you know, let me tell you something, David. I've been to a lot of these rallies. You've been to some of these rallies. And I don't want to get crass, but when I was talking to the Trump supporters, they all looked like they had life in their eyes. They looked like they had their own opinions. Yeah. You know, not all of them like Trump for the same reason. Not all of them were like, I believe everything he says, but he's saying these things that I like. And they all right. had something different to say. And they all look like they all had jobs, for one thing. And you go to the Bernie side, not to get crass once again, and I have, I've been accused of being a dirty hippie myself. So I don't feel bad saying this, but they smelled, you know, and, and they smelled like they hadn't bathed, that they weren't interested in it, that they were on this degenerate path of life that they needed handouts. And here's the thing. They sit there and bitch and bitch and bitch about the government doing stuff, going to war, doing this and that. Yet they think the only solution is more government to help them. That's right. Clear disconnect there in their way of thinking. There's nothing. Uh, it doesn't take much to get a bunch of unemployed no. college students to show up to a protest. Right. It takes a lot to get people who have jobs, who have families, who have businesses to show up to a political rally. It is virtually impossible. And we've seen across this country tens of thousands of people showing up for Donald Trump. Why? Because the Republican Party has continually deceived them about what they're going to do. So we're going to do this. They elect them, and then they thumb their noses at them. And now the task before the Republican establishment, according to George Will, is to make sure that he's going, that Donald Trump is going to lose all 50 states. He says if he gets the nomination, we've got to make sure he loses all 50 states and hand it to Hillary Clinton. That's what they want to do because Hillary will give them their globalist multinational agenda. And I think having the Republican Party, the GOP, work against Donald Trump is going to be the best thing for Donald Trump. And it's going to bring more people to his side and say, look, neither side wants this guy in. People are seeing through the BS. People are, are they're not part of the GOP that are voting for Trump. There's plenty of people that are in the GOP that are voting for him, but there's plenty that aren't. He's yeah. brought a lot of people over to his side just because 
people are sick of politicians because the politicians haven't done anything. They're only for their own special interests, just like Hillary Clinton. She's Goldman Sachs through and through. Yeah. Her, her son-in-law is a, a banker whose dad was a criminal, went to jail. That's right. So, and it's going to get really interesting. Oh, yeah. I, so when I saw this, when, when Donald Trump, as far ahead as he is, when he starts to talk about this connection JFK with a possible connection with uh, Cruz's dad, when I saw that this morning, I said to my wife, this is going to be an interesting campaign because yeah. he is going to pull out all, all kind of... of all of Mina, Hillary Arkansas. Yeah, all of her skeletons Barry are going to be come out and dangled in front of the public. It <laughs> is going to Foster, be a very, very travel gate. <laughs> I mean, it goes on and on and yeah. on. Hillary yeah. is neck deep in skeletons. Oh, it's I mean, you be cannot. So interesting. She can't pull them off herself. Nobody can. It'll take, it'll take a million Huma Abedins to pull those skeletons out of her butt. <laughs> She's going to be wearing all of this stuff it's on a continual basis. Or, hey, we're going to take your calls when we come back. Yeah. We'll and give out that number, and we got Joe Biggs and uh, Jakari Jackson in Studio 877-789-2539. 2539 right. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our live coverage of the Indiana primary, which has now turned out to be our live coverage of the end of the GOP primaries because we've had Ted Cruz officially drop out after being shellacked in Indiana. So um, we're going to take a look at that. Before we go on, we were just talking before we went to the break, Rob, about how it's going to be interesting now that the general election is beginning. Right. Uh, he's going to bring out all of Hillary's skeletons. And she had a very interesting remark this last week when she came out and started talking about her off-the-reservation remark. And I want to get <laughs> Joe Biggs and uh, Jakari Jackson to come in on this, too. Here's what she said. Uh, she said, I've had a lot of experience dealing with men who sometimes get off the reservation in the way they behave and how they speak. She says, I'm going to have trouble with uh, Trump because I can handle men who get off the reservation oh. in their behavior. And he came back and he said, uh, well, you know, first of all, she's insulted the Indians and, and they were upset about that. I think she issued an apology to them, but she didn't issue an apology to men. And I think she wants to put everyone, not just men, I think she wants to put all of us on a reservation because, you know, the reservations are the original Agenda 21, the original exactly. socialist uh, uh, detainment camps. She admitted that in a speech. She called it fun camps. Yeah. Adults can go and have That's fun. Right. That's, That's right. where we don't have to worry about working. We don't have to worry about bills or, or taking and care of our kids. You're going to go to the reservation. States you're not going to get out. do it for us. You well, know? you know, the fun camp. Back, uh, we had, uh, you, you talked and you interviewed and you shot the um, interviews with um, Russell Means. Yeah. American Indian Movement. And he wrote a book called Where White Men Fear to Tread. And he talked about book, how, too. yeah, he talked about how he said, look, the American government has broken every treaty they've ever made with the Indians. And he goes, now they're breaking the treaty they made with you, white man, the Constitution. What are you going to do about it? Look at the reservation system. What they did to the Indians on the reservation system is now what they're doing in the cities to everyone. And it is a system of socialist control. And she came back and tried to walk these statements back and said, no, no, no. I was thinking about Rudy Giuliani and Rick Lazio. And then she goes on to say, people have been <laughs> dumping stuff on me for 25 years. I don't think she was talking about Rudy and Rick. I think people that have been dumping bad behavior on her was Bill. I think we got that right <laughs> from the very beginning. It's a passive aggressive uh, Bill hating. That's right. That's and right. I guess no better person to bring on right now uh, to talk about Hillary and her the skeletons that are going to be in her closet when we see this general election kickoff is investigative journalist Wayne Madsen from the Wayne Madsen Report, also reporting for Infowars.com. Wayne, what do you make of the uh, landslide victory today with Donald Trump? Well, I, I, I'm really not too surprised. I, I really believe that the reason uh, Trump uh, decided to go for the jugular of Cruz with uh, the father uh, and, Lee, you know, association with Lee Harvey Oswald is that his internal polls showed him so far ahead, he figured, look, I, I can just drive him final uh, uh, nail in the coffin of this guy, Cruz. And he, it looks like he did it. Yeah, absolutely. But I think he, he, and that's the thing about Donald Trump. I think they underestimate him as a candidate. He is going to expose everything that Hillary has done. Don't you believe? <laughs> He's going to go for everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the guy, you know, the guy, I, I said a, a long time ago, I said, you know, the reason why, remember Norman Lear created All in the Family. He was hoping... Uh, white middle class, especially men, would laugh at the uh, Archie Bunker character, uh, and then th thus, thus they would look at their own failings. He said, I never thought they'd laugh along with them. 
That's right. So I think and and they laughed at his model of the guy who was supposed to be reasonable, I guess, Meathead, right? The son-in-law. Yes, he was supposed yes. to be the one to educate us all, and we were all laughing at him. It's like, what a dupe. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, so what we have here is a case of uh, people in Indiana uh, affiliated themselves with Trump's comments, just as people in Pennsylvania and New York and, uh, and South Carolina and Florida and every other state he went and did. And uh, I, I think, uh, you know, we also, I don't know how it's going to turn out. It looks like Bernie Sanders may pull up, pull an upset too. People on both sides are frustrated with their the political insiders in both parties, and we're just seeing a, a, a visceral reaction against them. Absolutely. Uh, have you, elites. Wayne, have you heard uh, Greg Gutfeld laughing about the JFK story and saying that Donald Trump pivoted towards Alex Jones? Did you hear that remark? No, but I'm not. Greg Gutfeld is an incredibly non funny person. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what comedy clubs he appears at, but if um, I, I would never pay for a ticket to listen to the guy. I think oh, is he a legitimate comedian? I, I don't watch him. He really I, is supposed to be a comedian? He's supposed to be a comedian, oh, okay. but you know, when you're a comedian, you're supposed to be funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he's he's not funny. He's just an arrogant, uh, well, I have some words I could use. I won't, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, the, the, the guy, uh, you know, first of all, what's he doing on a political roundtable program? Uh, uh, you know, he doesn't have any credentials to talk about anything. He's not a journalist. He doesn't do any investigation. He has a superficial knowledge of what's going on. And so these other guys, I mean, it was just a, it was what, about a, a month or so ago that they were laughing, National Review and the rest of these people were yeah. laughing about Why the not? 28 pages. They didn't even know what that was, okay? And so they were saying, hey, uh, Donald Trump turned into an Alex Jones caller. And now we're hearing the same thing from this. And when he brought the subject up, the people on the panel were going, what? what? I don't know what that is, a JFK yeah. <laughs> assassination? Oh, maybe. Yeah, so maybe. clueless. Maybe they need to have Gilbert Gottfried join Greg Gutfeld on that show on Fox and they can just bore people with their bad humor. Yeah, yeah. Well, they ought to do a little bit of investigation if they're going to get on a show and uh, talk about things. But I guess we don't have to have journalists anymore uh, to have a talk show. They don't have to do any investigation. They set the bar pretty low, I guess. Well, that's true. Uh, you know, the White House Correspondents Center used to be all journalists and their sources. And now half the people that show up are from Hollywood. I mean, they don't add anything to the occasion. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they're there, uh, uh, but uh, you know, uh, that's that's the that's the way the Washington press corps wants it, the White House press corps, and and so they've got this uh, sort of uh, vapid annual event where um, they they get some uh, comic, uh, like in this case, Larry Wilmore, who really, I think, was despicable for using uh, a term, uh, whether you like Obama or don't like him. Mm -hmm. I don't think that word had any place at that White House Correspondents' Dinner. Well, yeah, they used to say politics is uh, show business for ugly people. I guess it's show business for people who aren't even remotely entertaining anymore, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, they, they call the White House Correspondents' Dinner the nerd prom for a reason. <laughs> now, I, now, now I just think it's uh, it, it's not what it was. I know people who went uh, to these uh, events many, many years ago when they were strictly a journalist event. Either journalists were trying to curry favor with a source uh, that they hoped to get information from, or they did it to thank a source who had already given them some information. Mm -hmm. So it was it was that type of uh, uh, event, but no longer. It's now uh, almost like it's the Oscar uh uh, the Emmy, uh, the you know, Emmy or Oscar awards. Now, now, Wayne, over two weeks ago, you put out the article about was the uh, father of presidential hopeful Cruz, and, and you did it back in February too, involved in the JFK assassination, talking about that picture. And now, just yesterday, you, you're talking about this uh, voting voting fraud activist Gary Welsh, who's found dead, and uh, this is just leading up to the Indiana primary. He was the one. He was was he your source for the um, Marco Rubio foam yes. sex parties? He, he was the source of the photographs of the of the guy who looked an awful lot like Rubio at the uh, the phone parties in South Beach, Miami, and uh, uh, you know that that made its way into the debate when Chris Christie, the governor of New Jersey, uh, kept referring to Marco Rubio as the boy in the bubble. Uh, I think it was quite clear what he was referring to. And, and, you know, I mean, if 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 Trump picks Christie as his running mate. Uh, I think it's going to be quite a uh, interesting. Uh, uh, I mean, it's going to be a laugh a minute, isn't it? <laughs> it's already yeah. been a laugh a minute. I mean, this has yeah. been, I think, 
the be it's funny how people get so serious about their candidate, especially the Bernie people and the Hillary people are so yeah. serious about their candidate. And if you say anything against them, it's F you and we're going to, you know, right. rough you up. And you don't see the Trump supporters really doing that unless they're attacked first. Yeah. Yeah. Those people come into their house and start spitting on them, flipping them off. I mean, if somebody's going to flip you off, you know, I think you have some recourse at some point. I mean, I personally wouldn't do anything yeah. to anybody. And believe me, I've been getting flipped off left and right at these, these uh, events. I just let them talk because to me, it's just more ammunition. Yeah. It's just building the fire even higher. Hey, keep talking. Oh, I'm what? Great. Yeah. Here I am with a microphone. I'm so evil. I'm so despicable. Just keep talking. Keep telling me how bad I am. Well, but what's happened is we've had the, the globalist agenda move forward so quickly that people are waking up to what's happening. They're waking up in Europe. We're seeing it with the Brexit campaign. We're seeing it with the rise of these parties that want independence. We're seeing it here in America as well. It's a pushback of people who say, hey, we want to control our own destiny. We want uh, sovereign nations so that, that where we have some say so. And at the same time, you've got these elitists in both the Democrat and Republican Party saying, oh, you want a sovereign nation? I don't think so. I think we want globalism. You want to have some say so? I think we're going to veto your election because you're nothing but cannon fodder for our foreign wars. Okay, that's what they're telling us. And yeah. people are, that's what people are getting upset about. And so I, I think to a large degree, I think there's a lot of people, as there will be with any presidential candidate, who will buy into a particular personality. I try not to get involved in particular personalities because I don't want to be disappointed. Look, everybody's got feet of clay. We're all human, okay? And so I'm not looking to Donald Trump to be the face of God to America. That, I think, was a huge mistake for, for Ted Cruz. I think he turned off a lot of Christians by saying, hey, if you follow God, you need to vote for my son, okay? That's what they're trying to do oh, in Indiana. Yeah. And condemning other people like that. No, it isn't about that. And we don't want a cult of personality. The person who was selling the cult of personality was Ted Cruz, mm -hmm. and he yeah. was selling it with his public piety. People reject that. It's about the issues, and you're going to find that it isn't a binary situation. It isn't like I agree 100% with this guy and 0% with this guy. No, it's going to be a little bit of a mature individual understands there's some issues you're going to agree with and disagree with on a, on a particular uh, oh, candidate. Right. Reverend Cruz is a dominionist. He believes in a Christian theocracy, fundamentalist Christian theocracy in mm -hmm. America. He runs an operation in Dallas called, it's something like El Mundo de Fair, uh, you know, the world of fire. I mean, I haven't heard of such a, a, a kooky a church since uh, uh, Flip Wilson's The Church of What's Happening Now. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, the guy's obviously a, a Cuban version of Elmer Gantry. Yeah, oh yeah, uh, absolutely. I've, and, I've even and, called him that. I've called him Elmer Gantry myself. It, exactly. It's perfect fit. And, you know, he's nothing more than a con artist who's fleecing, uh, you know, his Spanish-speaking congregants in, in Dallas who probably don't have uh, much money to throw in his collection plate to begin with. I would hope people would, you know, well, it turns out people did see through this nonsense. But Gary Welsh, who ran Advance Indiana out of Indianapolis, an attorney, uh, a Republican uh, party, but not certainly not a Cruz guy or a Rubio guy. I believe he supported Trump. Uh, they're saying he, he shot and killed himself over the weekend. They found a, a gun next to his body. The police said, Oh, well, we're basing our suicide, with, even without the autopsy, and we know, we know how cops are with autopsies, uh, or the lack thereof, uh, yeah. recently with Scalia. The cops said, well, he posted something. He said, I may not be around on Tuesday to see Trump win, but, uh, and they say, well, that means he obviously intended to kill himself. Well, that, that's like Martin Luther King said in his last speech, I may not get there with you, but, <laughs> you know, yeah. I may not get to the promised land, but, he, you know, he obviously knew that his life was being threatened. That's right. They're going to say something right. like he, he hung his legs over the stairwell, shot himself behind the back of the head, and then <laughs> fell to his death Yeah. after that. It's yeah, going to be some ridiculous circumstances like yeah, with uh, other people, Gary, like Terrence Yankee. I don't believe Gary Welsh shot himself. I think he probably w uh, was having his life threatened. And, uh, and, 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 and so, and then and now, like with all these cases, like the D.C. Madam, Danny Casalero, mm -hmm. uh, Gary Webb, who I have been in contact with prior to his supposedly shooting himself twice in the head. <laughs> um, the, um, the police find and reporters find friends that say, oh, he was despondent. He had financial problems. The New York Daily News said, well, he was gay. What, 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 what in the world does that have to do with it? <laughs> yeah, Anything. exactly.
You can uh, you can build a case, and, and you don't typically do investigations like that trying to support your presupposition, right? You you come in and you offer a whole bunch of uh, things, and then you rule them out. Instead, we see that when it's a uh, convenient situation like it is with Scalia, that oh well, don't worry about it. We'll just uh, gloss over this. And yeah. as Alex pointed out, they certainly didn't do that with Prince. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they they want to find out who sold him the Percocet. That's, that's right. What they're looking for. Yeah. Hey, before we go any further, I want to give out the one eight hundred number, and we're going to load up those phone lines. And we're not going to go to anybody just yet, but just so we can get some people on the line right now. 877-789-2539. 877-789-2539. And I think that spells out Alex. Ah, there you go. <laughs> there it is. So start uh, start calling in, and we're going to go to your calls there in a second. Uh, we got Jakari Jackson and uh, Joe Biggs over in Studio B. Uh, guys, do you have any questions for uh, Wayne Manson? No, but I do have an interesting tweet that's going out right now. It's kind of circulating the, the Twitterverse. It says, breaking news, John Kasich holds out hope for an assassination. Repeat so that. It's, it's a, this guy is joking. It says, breaking news, John Kasich holds out hope for an assassination. <laughs> so yeah. joking about Kasich, how he's not going to give up regardless of the fact. And I think they've officially called it for Sanders. Uh, I believe that's what they're saying here on CNN. Or Trump is now actually. So that means Hillary gets stage. the delegates. So yeah. that's yeah. what they're calling. Yeah, it. That means Hillary, Hillary gets Sanders <laughs> wins. Hillary gets the delegates. And, uh, and Trump Cruz is, is now talking. coming out right now to speak at a uh, oh, about his victory, yeah. and uh, I'm sure talk about Ted Cruz as well. I, I don't think on the Democrat side. I may be wrong, but I don't think they get any extra delegates for winning the state. I think everything is done proportionately. They yeah. award the delegates statewide proportionately, and they award them. Uh, per uh, congressional delegate uh, delegation proportionately as well. So there's not a winner-take-all at any level. Well, hey, guys, can y'all uh, pop in just a little bit of that uh, audio of the Donald Trump uh, victory speech? See if he mentions Ted Cruz. So important. So important. This is from uh, Trump HQ in New York Indiana City. Indiana have been incredible. I started, as you know, not very long ago, about six weeks ago, and I was told I had a 20-point deficit and I went there and I worked very hard and I campaigned and I made lots of speeches and met lots of incredible so people. Incredible jump. people. 57 point jump. Yeah. You don't get better. Jeez. And the crowds got bigger and bigger and toward the end it was like I didn't want to leave. I almost said, maybe I'll just never leave. And it, it resonated somehow. And uh, we had a tremendous victory tonight. It was a tremendous victory. and. I, get, I have to thank Bobby Knight. Boy, Bobby yeah. Knight was incredible. Did, did you know who Bobby Knight was? That yeah. Was the coach of the Indiana Hoosiers. I do know that much. I do know that <laughs> much. I don't follow sports. I, you know, Huckabee said, hey, I was governor. Bobby Knight was also known for telling it like it is, too. That's right. You know, and, and right. people Rolling didn't tears. really want to go play for him because he was such a hard coach and he demanded so much out of his players. He did not. And he, and he won with less talented players than other teams did because yeah. he was able to take them, get them to focus as a team. So... That's pretty interesting. I've read a couple books on Bobby. Knight, Huckabee really. said that he was uh, actually the coach at my uh, college. I went to Texas Tech University. Wow. Oh yeah, they, he, he was, did move there. He yeah. was behaving himself really well the whole time he was there, though. It was right <laughs> after the Indiana. Incident. He threw chairs and. Well, well, Huckabee said about the endorsement of uh, Indiana's Governor Pence, and and really it was kind of a non-endorsement. Scarborough was talking about that. And said, hey, if somebody gave me an endorsement like that, I would say, take your blanking endorsement back. But Huckabee said. If uh, and when I was governor of Arizona of uh, Arkansas, if somebody had come to me and uh, uh, they had a choice of uh, my endorsement or the choice of the uh, coach of the Razorbacks, they'd be crazy to take my endorsement over the coach. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that truly is what happened. I think and I think it made a big difference. Hey uh, guys, we'll come back to him if he starts talking about Ted Cruz. I think that might be uh, really the only interesting thing. And I guess from here on out, he's probably going to be campaigning. And I think there's one more. I don't know what the del uh, the primary schedule is. You I know, know June 7th is California, but I think there's a couple more in between there. I don't think Trump is really going to have Virginia might be one. any kind farewell kisses for Ted Cruz because Ted Cruz really went off the rails today about uh, Donald Trump. Yeah. Pretty much called him everything he could called think of. Called him a philanderer of. today. Yeah. Called him pretty much everything and attacked him <laughs> at every personal level he could think of. So I don't think that Donald Trump is really going to have much use for him. Yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. He needs to stay in the Senate where he is and pretend like he's against the Fed. He needs a like he needs John a Senate Cornyn. challenge when he comes up for his first reelection. Maybe we could get somebody who's really an American from uh, from Texas. You know, a natural David born Simpson, citizen. Maybe what David Simpson? Oh yeah, David yeah, Simpson. He'd be, be great. excellent. He'd, he'd be, be excellent. Great. Except we need him here in Texas. You right. know, that's the thing. <laughs> we don't need to send all of our best people to Washington. You know, we need good people like David Simpson here in the Texas legislature. 
Yeah, he had, uh, he was he the one that came up with the bill uh, just saying, hey, this God made this plant marijuana and we should right. let people use it for medicine. And he is a straight up, you know, diet in the wool Texan. And he was the one who introduced twice the bill to stop the TSA sexually yep. molesting our children twice. Yep. And that got shut down at the uh, national news story. Yeah, got shut down because the TSA said uh, we're going to turn Texas into a no-fly yep. zone. And it came out in the court documents when John Corbett was suing the TSA that at the very same time, the TSA said in their internal documents, there is no threat to airports or airplanes. At the same time, they were saying, we're going to shut you down if you don't have that. So they, they took that down, but he came up a second time. And then he's, he's a real conservative libertarian. He came up with that bill and said, we're just going to remove marijuana completely out of all the criminal code of Texas. And he at least got through the exemption for medical marijuana for people who have epileptic seizures due to their vaccine reaction. Yeah. I mean, that's the amazing thing. They mandate vaccines, and yet they wanted to try to keep out medical marijuana. We still have medical marijuana as a class one drug here in Texas, which is to say that it has no medical usage, except they have a medical exemption for it. Hey, guys, I got some breaking news yeah, from the Clinton compound. What's okay. going on there? Hillary says if she becomes president, she will bring Bill out of retirement and put him to work in the White House. <laughs> what does that mean? Is I that a euphemism know. for something? Well, I don't know. He's going to make him the yard boy. <laughs> servicing, <laughs> servicing the female aides? Is that what he'll be doing? She's going to yeah. put him Ooh. back on the reservation. Hey, uh, it, we, we still have Wayne Madsen, don't we? Is Wayne still there? Mm. Wayne, Wayne, what, yes, can, what can we look here. for? What can we look for? Like, I guess the first couple skeletons that are going to pop out of Hillary's closet when we start. Uh, first this, skeletons to drop. The, the first skeletons to drop. How many? I mean, I know we're going to get a ton of them. <laughs> But what, what, what are the first couple that are going to be when she starts going against Donald Trump? Well, since, uh, you know, we we saw with Cruz, uh, you know, this old old story uh, with uh, Raphael and Oswald, I, I would imagine we're going to hear uh, about Vince Foster again. Um, uh, he was the deputy White House counsel, of course, whose body uh, was discovered at Fort Marcy Park. Uh, in, uh, in in suburban uh, Virginia, outside of Washington, across and supposedly the some files that were supposedly in Vince Foster's office ended up in the Clinton residence after that, right? Right. That? It, they called that a suicide or some feeling that it might not have been, but uh, apparently he had a very close relationship with Hillary Clinton. Uh, I, I really think, uh, and I'm not saying I would do it, but I think we're going to hear the name Vince Foster. Uh, once again, after these many, many years, uh, because of his relationship with Hillary Clinton. No, there wasn't much blood found at the crime scene. This is stuff I'm just remembering. Gun in the wrong hand, was it, Wayne? I was, I, was, yeah. I was at the crime scene when they first let people in there. And uh, uh, the thing that struck me was how there was like this uh, rectangular area that had been s swept clean of everything. Uh, cigarette butts. Uh, uh, you know, as Fort Marcy Park was well known as a place for guys to sell drugs at the time and uh, also uh, gay liaisons. So you'd find all kinds of, you'd find uh, uh, hypodermic needles, uh, uh, cigarette butts and other unsavory things. But this area where they found Vince Foster's body had been swept clean of every possible clue you could imagine, uh, like a vacuum cleaner came in there. And uh, it was quite noticeable, actually. And then they closed the park for almost a year because they said they were uh, re refurbishing it. So uh, <laughs> nobody could go in there. Actually, what, the reason they did it, they didn't want the park used as a backdrop for television crews uh, because, it, you know, there was still a great deal of media interest in the Vince Foster case. Well, of course, when they come back or they start to, uh, I think it'll kind of, he'll kind of take his clue as to what, she chooses to talk about in some cases. If she starts to question some of his business dealings, I would expect him to bring up Whitewater, for example. Mm -hmm. Talk about what a Travel genius game. she was <laughs> with uh, her investments. Her uh, cattle futures. Bernie's yeah. got Indiana. Exactly. Yeah, so there's, I think some of that will, uh, you know, there'll be a back and forth whenever she attacks him. He'll hit her back uh, pretty hard with, with some of her Yeah, history. well, we got the email, email, the private email server. We got Libya, Benghazi, uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think, uh, and I look, I, I, I think also her personal life, Huma Abedin, uh, the wife of uh, Anthony Weiner, a.k.a. 
hey, Carlos Danger, uh, that relationship is going to come uh, come <laughs> out, and uh, other other relationships that Hillary Clinton has had. Well, well you know, you, you brought up the email stuff. I, I think that's really going to be front and center because he's already talked about how he would prosecute her. And that's something that's still percolating through the FBI. So I think he's really going to hit her on that because that is the most recent issue, big scandal. And that touches on foreign policy. It touches on her tenure there as Secretary of State. And we just had Cy Hirsch this weekend say that he believed that Hillary Clinton was in the rat line uh, uh, authorizing uh, the transfer of sarin gas, perhaps from the yeah. arms bazaar there in Benghazi to Syria to try yeah. to or orchestrate a false flag to get us involved in that war. So well, you know, uh, that's right on the front burner right now. I think he's really going to go there and talk on that because right. that, that hits on a number of issues. You know, her girlfriend, Huma, uh, has uh, absolute uh, direct links to the Muslim Brotherhood. which right. of course is Her parents. Her parents, uh, yeah. So, so possibly Hillary may, may want a focus to be on Vince Foster because he's probably the last male that she has reportedly <laughs> had in a, uh, any sort of uh, relationship with. <laughs> that turned I her off men, Bill, I guess. I, I, I leave Bill Clinton out of that list as well. Yeah. So should we start calling her the Black Widow then, I guess? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she consumes her mates. But, uh, <laughs> and Bill was too radioactive. Yeah. Um, uh, Wayne, anything else to add on the death of, of this uh, investigator, Mr. Welsh? Well, I, I certainly it, it came as a shock to me because I had been in, in contact with him just as it was a shock. Uh, when Gary Webb supposedly committed suicide, I had been working with him on a, uh, uh, we were investigating the same company, a company called Affiliated Computer Systems, uh, which actually uh, had the contract to approve the student visas for Mohammed Atta and the other uh, alleged hijackers. And uh, the, the, the focus, ironically enough, the focus was on Indianapolis, where Gary Welsh died because Gary Webb and I uh, we're looking at a guy named Stephen Goldsmith, the vice president of ACS, who was a uh, former mayor of Indianapolis. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Well, just for the record, Wayne, uh, I'm feeling fine. I'm not thinking about suicide. Neither is Rob Dew. And neither are you, right, Wayne? You're, you're feeling fine. <laughs> no, I don't have any ballooning mortgages. I, I, I'm in, uh, you know, I don't have any health issues uh, uh, other than I need to lose some weight. Um, I don't, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I can't think of, I'm not, I'm not suffering clinical depression. I, and people say, aren't you worried about the, I said, look, I have one simple rule I live by. If anyone takes a shot at me, please don't miss because I won't. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Very good. Wayne Madsen from the Wayne Madsen Report. I think you're going to be on the Alex Jones Show later this week to talk about yes. this and and other things, just basically how you're predicting and basically starting the news cycle because you, you were talking about this stuff months ago, especially with the JFK connections with um, Rafael Cruz. So thank yeah. you for joining us. And uh, we're going to go to some calls now. We have uh, Taylor in Colorado who uh, wants to ask you about Webster Tarpley. <laughs> I like Webster, by the way, but I just think he's misguided in a few things. But anyway, go ahead, Taylor. What's your question? Hey, what's up, guys? Good show tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not like a huge Webster Tarpley fan or anything. I've just seen him in what was it, the Obama deception, I think. Mm -hmm. But and Fall uh, the Republic. Yeah, you know, seems like a smart guy. But I saw David's run in with him and. Uh, wanted you guys to elaborate on that a little bit more. Well, it all started when I went over and I saw his sign, which Rob saw uh, that they've, they've Trump produced equals this. Nazi. Yeah. Trump, Trump equals Nazi. Trump equals Nazi, and they've Trump got Trump out like that. And, and so I went over and asked him, I said, do, do you really think that that's winning you any converts to uh, your, uh, to attacking that Trump when Jewish you do that? Too, yeah, you do know. that at the, uh, yeah, the APAC convention, 15,000 uh, Jews that are there to support Israel, and he puts uh, Trump up as a Nazi. I said, do you think that's really helping anything? And they really uh, got after me, assuming that, like I said before, that I support Trump on every single issue. And I pointed out to them, you know, look, on libertarian issues, we don't have a candidate in uh, the Republican or Democrat Party right now. Uh, even I think uh, some of the, the past Repo uh, libertarian candidates like Gary Johnson, I think were very weak on a lot of the libertarian issues. I think he was very weak. In the, in the four years ago on civil liberties. I think he could have come out much stronger on that. So 
uh, you know, we look at these things, and I said, it's about the globalism. And he says, well, you know, I want to have a tax on, uh, on trade and tariff and everything. And, and I said, he has proposed a tariff that's even higher than what you're talking about. So, you know, it was a back and forth that way. The way I read Webster Tarpley is he's a big fan of FDR. I'm not a big fan of FDR. So we have a fundamental disagreement on that issue. I believe that FDR uh, did a lot of command and control and centralization of the economy and, and politics that I believe is unwarranted. I believe it's anti-libertarian. I don't support that. I think that the uh, Glass-Steagall Act that he champions, I agree with that. I think that we should. If we're going to allow banks to have some kind of a monopoly, there ought to be some strings attached to that. But I don't think they ought to have monopolies. I don't think we ought to be... Uh, federally insuring the banks. And so uh, I think that when they remove those restrictions, and if I'm not mistaken, I think that was Bill Clinton that took out Glass-Steagall. Mm -hmm, uh, was. It wasn't even the Republicans. So, uh, yeah, I think that uh, they're allowing them to speculate and gamble with other people's money and then bail them out. And that's the other part of the problem. I mean, even if you allow them to speculate, if they fail, allow them to fail. Okay, exactly. This is worse than the FDIC when we say they're going to be able to do anything that they want to. And no matter how much they lose, we're going to bail them out because they're too big to fail. I mean, we've all had that discussion. We're all uh, openly contemptuous of that. And I think that's a big part of the frustration that founded the Tea Party and has founded this movement with Trump. It's a pushback against crony capitalism, against the multinational corporations that are ripping us off. And, so and I had a run in with a couple of uh, Webster Tarpley fans in uh, uh, San Francisco. And um, they, you know, wanted to talk to me and give me a history lesson and this and that. And I was, I was talking with them, I'll let them talk. Uh, one of them, the guys even did a speech in front of the crowd and I'm gonna be cutting those pieces together because they are really, you know, they're pushing for this new deal for the people. But when you go back and look at the new deal, people have studied that and they're saying the, the policies that Roosevelt put into place caused the Great Depression to last seven years longer. That's it right. caused massive unemployment right. because they were fixing wages mm -hmm. that weren't economically feasible at the time. They also went through and destroyed a lot of food uh, so they were slaughtering hogs, they were killing chickens to uh, artificially raise the price of, of food stuff so they could stabilize the farming industry. And th that's kind of what you have now. Like milk should not be $3 a gallon. It should be what I pay for raw milk, about $9 a yeah. gallon, between seven and nine. That's the real price of milk. But because you have federal subsidies subsidizing this stuff, you don't see that real price exist. And you had the issue where you had a farmer who said, I don't want to participate in the subsidies. I want to just grow stuff and sell it here locally. And they yeah. said, you can't do that. They no, you got to be part of the, the collective. They took it to the Supreme Court and they said, even though you're growing all this stuff within your state, selling it to people within your state, you're still affecting the global economy with your little corn or whatever it was that he was selling. And they got away with that because FDR packed the Supreme Court. And that's one of the problems that I had with Ted Cruz in the sense that he kept putting forward this notion that if we're going to protect the Constitution, we have to pack the Supreme Court. If we rely and we allow the Supreme Court to be the final arbiter of the Constitution, we've lost. We have to recapture that at the state and local level. And uh, if we don't do that, if we allow the Supreme Court to have the final say-so on everything, then we really have lost. And it doesn't really matter uh, who is president. We're not going to be able to overcome these nine political appointees. All right, thanks for calling, Taylor. Uh, now we got Daniel in New York, wants to talk about geoengineering, weather modification, and the election. Go ahead, Daniel. Hey, guys, how's it going? I love them forwards, love the crew. Um, thank you for covering geoengineering. No other really network I can even see covers that. That's major. Um, now I want to talk about what happened in Colorado, like about the judge ordering the mother's child to be removed because of her private beliefs. Absolutely. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I've got the amazing? story right here from Infowars.com from Paul Joseph Watson today. Judge orders mother's child to be snatched because she believes in chemtrails. And, I mean, that is ridiculous. What about all the people who believe in UFOs and alien abductions and the Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot? And I'm not saying chem, uh, chemtrails and geoengineering belong in that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you can't do that to people. You're snatching because of geoengineering. And geoengineering is admitted. It's admitted. But go ahead. Go ahead, That's Daniel. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's complete insanity. Like, lock me up right now. It's, the UN wouldn't ban it if it wasn't existing. It's complete insanity. We yeah. had the father of weather weapons on video talking about what they used to do. It's essentially chemtrailing clouds to make giant monsoons to flood out the North Vietnamese. Well, what it amounts to is it, it amounts to the suppression of free thought and free speech. 
Uh, there are certain things that you're not going to be allowed to say. Yeah. And there's nothing that harms anybody that's hateful about that. I no. mean, this is not anything that's racist speech or hate speech in any respect. Uh, this and it's is not anything not that's anybody. not violent or going to incite people to violence. This is simply analysis and discussion. And if you don't agree with it, uh, you're not allowed to take people's children away. What we need to be doing is we need to be taking that judge out of that court. That's what the people in that area ought to do, whether they agree with chemtrails or not, whether they agree with the science of it uh, or the investigation of it. We need to remove judges like this. And that's what I'm saying when we, we have to recapture our activism at the local level and not depend on a president to solve everything. I don't think the president can do a lot of the things that need to be done. They don't have the power and shouldn't have the power. And we shouldn't elect a, a libertarian FDR if such a thing could exist. I mean, that's a contradiction in terms. But still, we need to do things at the local level. And one of the things we need to do is when you've got a judge that's this outrageous, you need to mount a recall operation. We've had uh, state legislators recalled in, uh, in Colorado for gun control legislation, wasn't it, in Colorado? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the sort of thing we need to start doing at the local level. And it's hard to do that. Because the national media, like we are, we can't focus. We, we both pull up stories like this, but we can't focus to the degree that we need to focus on a particular state or a local problem. We put stories out like this so people in this area can get activated. That's right. Holy crap, right. I better do something. And they get on the phone, they get on their Facebook, and they say, we got to go defend this lady. That's right. We have to go to the judge and say, you're wrong. To follow this judge around. Tell we can he's tell you that that's you happening. This. We can tell you that that's happening. And the, but then you guys have to act on it at that local level. You need to recall that judge at that local level. So we can we can shine the spotlight on it. Uh, but you know it, it, that's that's really all that can be done at the national level is to focus on these individual cases of abuse. I mean, seriously, judge wants cloudy skies. I mean, you could maybe use that. That could be your petition. Yeah, <laughs> this judge doesn't. Uh, thinks that cloud clouds coming out of uh, of jet planes and persisting and spreading out over a large area is normal. And and here's what it says: um, she was triggered after Van Dab said that the inquiry was triggered after she raised the subject of chemtrails during a visit to her daughter's school and was immediately told to leave the premises. Like saying the word chemtrails is suddenly like using the N word or something. Yeah. You know, just totally ridiculous. Um, I guess you're in New York. But uh, are, are there any laws like, or any judges like that in your area acting like this, Daniel? Uh, I know the judges are actually really crooked. I live in Westchester, so it's a pretty wealthy area. Like, white boys getting arrested with things is not a problem. So that's all I can really say. I know they're crooked. If you know them, you know it's not a problem. So that's all I can say about judges. But other than that, I'm not really too informed about that, so I wouldn't be able to say. Well, you know, there's there's moves, as, as Alex was talking to Lord Moncton earlier today about uh, climate change, and they were talking about the, the ideas that have been floated by a lot of uh, the people who support that, saying that we need to apply the RICO statute. We need to prosecute people mm -hmm. who are deniers. And this is what's really dangerous when we start seeing, and that's really where we've kind of focused, because this is, that is a national movement. It's an international movement to try to su suppress free speech, discussion, scientific inquiry. Science is based on skepticism. Science is never finished. We have seen all the major breakthroughs have been an overturn of accepted conventional wisdom in science. And so we should never get to the situation where we start criminalizing scientific dissent and discussion. And that's what these people want. And this is a local example of this affecting somebody's family. And so if you if you follow our news, if you see what is happening, you see the overall pattern, and this is just a very very sad, unfortunate incident that has uh, affected uh, one person to a great degree. But I'm, this is I'm surprised not the end it's chemtrails and not vaccines that we're not seeing yeah. vaccines in this story. Exactly, and that's chemtrails. the same type of thing. You know, I, I I would think you would see that first before chemtrails. But going back to uh, our our interview today that Alex did with um, with Lord Moncton, talking about how he had a debate with a scientist. Yeah, they were talking about. The specifics with with uh, carbon, how it's not going to double and that's going to reaffect and, and make everything explode. And and the, the scientists went back and said, you know what, you're right, because he didn't have people pressuring because he's already retired. He didn't have people pressuring right. him, saying, you better toe the line, mm -hmm. jerky, or you're out of here. You know, he didn't have a pension or or, or uh, what is it, tenure? He didn't have tenure. Yeah. He was worried about. So you saw him go back and change his mind, and write a paper about it, and it's going to all come out in a couple of days. Of course, we, we broke it here first on InfoWars, just like we're breaking all these other stories. Uh, but, but it's all, the, the commonality <laughs> of all this is that you have this, this, 
this intolerance, unfortunately, is coming from our institutions of higher learning, the places where you're supposed to get a liberal education, which would mean the original meaning of the word was open-minded, that it would give you the, the tools of education so that you would be liberated or freed to do your own inquiry. Instead, what these people have become is this closed click enforcing An this, chamber. Yeah, this, this <laughs> rigid uh, religion that they have. And that's really what it's become. It's become a cultic religion. And that's where it's going. It's going to that. Daniel, you hope we answered your call. question. We're going to go to another caller. We have uh, O'Brien <laughs> wants to talk about Trump. Go ahead, O'Brien. Yeah, basically what I think is that basically Trump does have the... Uh... Oh, hey, you Did there? Lose him? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Go. Trump has the... No, Trump has the way he used to win, but if they basically kill him, I mean, you know, it might be... It might be the whole thing might be over, and basically, you know, people that thought that he was fake or something, you know, are going to be really disappointed that basically he was real and trying to save the country. I, I wouldn't be surprised at this point. I think Alex brought that up today as well. That you know, and maybe that's why Kasich's still in the race. You know, something you know, none, none of us know. <laughs> and um, but you know, I don't. You Wait. can't live your life going, "What if I get killed? What if the?" person I'm in, you know, if that happens, then you got to expose it for one of what, what happens, what are the real circumstances behind it? And, you know, that's going to be harder than anything because the mainstream media will come in and try to control the narrative. That's why we need more people out there as citizen journalists, yeah. because it's going to be that one guy with the cell phone that's going to get the clear image of the person if anything does happen, and who's going to put it out on YouTube, and that's going to blow the whole case wide open. And I believe that with uh, Ross Perot, I, I, I find it credible that the Bush family would threaten him. Sure. Uh, but, you know, the fact that he he dropped out. And in those days, again, you had the no mainstream media, media out there yeah. telling people, oh, no, our leaders would never do anything like that. They would never try to assassinate anybody in a foreign country. OK, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, now people would believe that um, it, it hurt him when he dropped out and, and came back in. But uh, I'm sure that that Donald Trump has had a lot of threats. And it's only going to, I think it's only going to intensify, but that's why, you know, the Secret Service are there. And hopefully those, the Secret Service are trained and they're the, the best at, at uh, guarding him. Let's hope none of them are bought off or anything like that. Uh, let's go to Jim in Georgia. And hey, uh, Joe Biggs, uh, Jakari Jackson, anytime you guys want to jump in and, uh, and answer a question, please do. Um, yes, Jim, sir. Jim, Jim in Georgia, go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you. Leanne, Joe, Jakari, Richard, David, Rob, Wayne. The info to, uh, the info wars team is amazing. Thank, well, you. thank you for listening. I love Alex and I love you all. You are nothing but just a wonderful. It's an exponential addition to the team. Well, and, we couldn't uh, do it without your listening. Thank you for supporting yeah. us. Yeah. Yes, sir. Imagine from here in Georgia with such a landslide. Hey, finally our voice is over. That's, That's it. right. That's it. it took a while. You know, it took. <laughs> It took many years, right. I, you know, I, I, I don't know who wanted Mitt Romney in, in last time, no, no. you know, and that's I the didn't. thing. I've never been a Republican or Democrat. Uh, well, I did vote for Clinton in 90, but then I switched over to Libertarian because I couldn't stand the two parties. Look, we know last Obama. time they wanted they wanted a Republican and a Democrat who both were going to put through Obamacare. Romney right. had already done it with Romney Care, and they're going to give you different personalities to choose from. They're going to give you a few little differences and social issues, but the key thing they wanted was Obamacare, and they got it. This time, what they want are the treaties, and they want the open borders, mm -hmm. and that's why the GOP establishment, like George Will, is pushing so hard against Trump and for Hillary Clinton because she will give them that stuff. And they've only got one dog in the fight right now, and that's Hillary. Yes, sir. And uh, let this be a message to Nathan Deal on the, uh, the carrying, uh, the open carry uh, bill he shot down. Yeah. Let it be a message. Let them all eat cake by themselves in their little holes while they hide from we the people. That's right. I agree. Now, one of the things that happened tonight in Indiana, which I was sad I'm to sorry, see. I'm sorry. I'm celebrating. <laughs> I'm very much celebrating. <laughs> It, it, it's, it's good, and and I you know I want to see somebody like Donald Trump who's standing up to the globalist agenda, the open borders, the trade treaties that are going to manage our economy and destroy it. But at the same time, there was also a Senate race there for an open seat, and Mitch McConnell's guy was way ahead of the other guy. 
okay, who was a conservative Tea Party outsider. And unfortunately, that didn't get any attention in the press, and nobody is really paying attention. So the, the issue is, at the local level, do you know who the local candidates are that are going to make a big difference in your life? Do you know, and I'm talking about not just the Senate and the congressional candidates, I'm talking not even necessarily about the state candidates that are going to be there. Like we were talking about the excellent state rep that we have here, David Simpson. But at the even at the city and county level, do you know people that are going to make your life a living hell or are going to give you some freedom and some relief from oppression? And that's the key thing. If we're really going to be empowered, we're going to understand that. And, and at the final level, we're going to understand that we have the power at the jury level. And once you have some juries who assert their power, then you're going to have some people are going to have the courage not to plea bargain because 90% 90, 90 of the people don't even go to trial. They're intimidated by the government about that. Once we start watching each other's backs there, that's where we're really going to see a difference. Yes, sir. And uh, I've been involved here in Forsyth County, Georgia, and uh, trials where I have been the last person and got somebody off on a charge that was just beyond, it was just, there was no reason for the charge. Uh, we, we got him off of, uh, well, I got him off just by being that one man of being in, in a child endangerment, uh, just charged. Everything else was enough. I mean, he was, he was, it was bad enough what we deal with. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm so excited. <laughs> that's good. No, that's the thing is that, you know, jurors need to understand that they're there to judge the way the laws are going to be applied. And if we don't, yes, sir. if we don't agree with the way it's going to be applied, sorry. we're not there just to judge the facts where they're Carry to that watch each other's facts. When that's you right. Go into the courtroom. Just don't let them know that you've got a constitution exactly. or they'll dismiss you. Exactly. That's one of the other reforms that need to be made is how they control the jury selection. But that's another story. Thanks for calling, Jim. We're going to go to Alex now in Massachusetts uh, talking about the 1986 Firearms Protection Act, which I, uh, I started to look up because I don't even know all the specifics of that. But go ahead. What's your question, Alex? Well, my question is, Trump is pro Hold on, hold on. Put him on hold for a second. Uh, his phone is way too low. See if y'all can fix that. Let's go to uh, Scott in California. Uh, let's talk about the JFK Ted Cruz connection. Yeah, we've been talking about that all night. Fox News doesn't like it when you talk about that, though. That really makes them mad. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, hey, guys. How's it going? I uh, just wanted to say, first off, that uh, Brain Force and Silver Bullet have been amazing. I love both those products. Uh, we do, too. The, yeah, Thank you. I Thank know. you for, for so, uh, supporting us. So um, I think one thing that people are overlooking with uh, the way that Donald Trump has talked about the JFK connection to Ted Cruz and the 28 pages is that he's kind of broken the illusion that if you talk about a government conspiracy and politics, then your career is over. Yes. That yeah. used to be what limited people from saying anything. In You're politics, right. Mm -hmm. Even you know, libertarians wouldn't go out on a limb and talk about those things. But because Donald Trump is bold, he's not meek, he's not afraid to double down. He's not now, we, now he talks about it, and nobody even attacks him. They're, they don't even want to talk about it. Like you just had the, um, the Fox guy who was like, why isn't anybody talking about this? Because the illusion has been broken. They don't want and to feel so the I wrath think. of his Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> well, but exactly you're right. He too. has directly confronted yeah. the little shibboleths that the media has erected everywhere saying, you can't go here, you can't go there. And he just busts through these little paper uh, uh, barricades that they put up places. And part of it is the political correctness. You know, he's directly confronted them. And that's why he has triggered them to such a great degree. He said, uh, no. We understand what's going on here, and we're going to talk about that. And you're not going to say that I can't go to Chicago because Bill Ayers owns it. Okay, he gets in their face, and he, he comes out and he talks about these things, and they say, oh, polite company, you don't talk about uh, government conspiracies or cover-ups. Exactly, exactly. So I think uh, now that it looks like it's going to be him versus Clinton, he definitely needs to uh, come out firing all cylinders on all of her cover-ups, even the ones that are so out there that no one will discuss. Uh, one quick question before I go. So wasn't um, Larry Nichols in possession of some secret documents about uh, the death of one uh, Clinton uh, uh, confidant? Um, I can't say that specifically because I don't know because uh, we've had him on so much. I don't, I don't watch every interview with Larry Nichols, but um, I imagine 
if anything's going to come out now, it would be, you know, the time for Larry to yeah. bring it out because, you know, he's, he's going we through some health issues himself. And, uh, you know, we pray for Larry Nichols and he really has brought out a lot of, a lot of stuff. And I guess he's trying to get in the tr get in touch with the Trump campaign to give them some information. Um, but uh, go ahead, Jakari. No, I was saying uh, when uh, myself and Josh had a chance to speak to Larry Nichols, I mean, I can't speak to if he has any particular documents, but uh, there was somebody that he states was having an affair with uh, Hillary, a gentleman, I believe it was, who uh, turned up dead. I believe you guys referenced him a little bit early, but I can't recall the name. Vince Foster. Of my Vince head. Foster. Vince Foster. Yeah. So uh, there is that whole thing, which I don't know if he has documents or tapes or whatever, but uh, he has spoken about that before. If he does, he hasn't given them to us, and we haven't seen them, and we no. don't know anything about them at all. One iota and uh, release the secret know, documents. Just put them out, Larry. Don't <laughs> wait. Jeez, if he got anything, you know, because that's how that's, uh, right. that's how people end up, you know, dead at the bottom of stairwells in Indianapolis, Indiana, and apartment complexes. Well, now like, is the okay, time before Welch. Hillary becomes president. We don't exactly that happen. Exactly. Uh, hey, did Alex get his phone uh, back in order? Alex, are you there? Up in Massachusetts? Uh, yes. Okay, yeah, you sound great. Uh, yes. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. All right. Um, so I heard that Trump is pro Second Amendment. And um, I'm wondering if he became president, would he, you know, take down the 1986 Firearms Protection Act, Act which basically doesn't let you own a machine gun after May 19, 1986? Right. I saw um, that. And it's sort of the um, instant, instant background check, uh, criminal background check system. Now, are you for the instant criminal background check or against that um well I'll, i will say is i am with for background checks um you know men, mentally you know because we've you know we've had school we have shootings because people had a mental disability so you know what i'm talking about correct mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah so I, I'm, I'm with that i'm with that and but you want a I, machine gun I'm, a, I'm pro what you're pro machine gun though right yeah you know I don't see. I don't see the harm. I don't see the harm of it. And you know, and we should have it. We should be able to own one because our Second Amendment. We should go own a firearm. On April nineteenth, so, I, I had to... on April nineteenth, I had George Washington in studio with me. Actually, Mark Collins is the George Washington interpreter, and he presented us with a, an, an assault weapon, which was a flintlock. Mm -hmm. In seventeen seventy six, they had flintlocks, which were state of the art firearms. They had cannons that the British moved to take away from them. The Second Amendment is about defending our country from invasion and from internal insurrection and so forth, the militia. And it's about having military firearms. And the first Supreme Court decision that touched on the Second Amendment said that this individual who unfortunately died as they were taking this court, uh, case to uh, the Supreme Court, so there was nobody to represent his side. So they, they rammed this through. They said, no, shot, sawed off shotgun is not a military weapon. Well, that simply isn't true. It was used as a military weapon in the Civil War. And in but Vietnam. The, yeah, but exactly. But the bottom line is a very effective uh, military weapon, especially when you're riding a horse and firing a sawed-off shotgun. <laughs> uh, it's much more effective than a saber. But the bottom line is that uh, it, it's about having military weapons. And when they try to scare people about the capacity of magazines, when they try to scare them about assault weapons and don't define that, yep. we need to not back down from that. And And as you're asking this question, I had an article here uh, from the New American, uh, came out yesterday. Tennessee law blocks the enforcement of gun-grabbing treaties. And, of course, uh, the legislature there uh, passed a law saying that uh, they're not going to honor any international treaties that would abrogate our rights to own firearms. This is targeted toward the United Nations mm -hmm. Arms Trade Treaty that they're trying to push through. The Secretary of State, John Kerry, has signed and uh, it has the support of nearly half of the U.S. Senate. It was introduced by a Democrat, folks, a John Wendell, who sponsored the bill, put this through. And as they point out in this article, you would think that it'd be a no-brainer in a state as traditionally conservative as Tennessee. But legislators successfully killed the bill when it was first put through, but it was then resurrected by citizens. Here's the issue, folks. You cannot rely on the Constitution to be protected by lawyers and the Supreme Court. And that was the fundamental problem with Ted Cruz's talking about how he is going to protect the Constitution. You have to understand, when we look at the, whether or not Donald Trump agrees with us on issues of liberty or not, we need to understand that it is ultimately up to us. Just as the citizens in Tennessee kept pushing this thing, even when their state legislators would not do it, saying we are not going to allow the enforcement of a treaty that abrogates the Second Amendment. You just have to 
to not allow that to happen. And there's multiple ways to do that. And you can do that at state level. We don't have all of our chips on the Supreme Court. We should never follow through on something like that. We should never limit it to that. And now we aren't the two biggest uh, gun aficionados here in on this panel right now. We have Jakari Jackson and uh, Joe Biggs. Yeah. Oh, yeah how do you guys feel about I the... Would like, yeah, go uh, ahead. Personally, I'm a fan of assault weapons. I know many people want to ban them for various reasons. You have people like Diane Feinstein. If you look at her list of, it was a hundred some odd guns. That includes things like uh, AR-15s, AK-47s. Yeah, I believe there's even a pump action shotgun on there. Um, and those type of regulations, I'm not a fan of because uh, people who are willing to go inside of a school or a liquor store, whatever it may be, uh, they're willing to open fire regardless of what they have on them. So I don't see the reason why banning the, uh, the assault rifle would be more effective. Now, the rationale behind that or one of the big reasons behind that, thus is my understanding, is the, I believe it was Los Angeles shooting. If you guys pull it up on YouTube, yep. I'm sure you'll find it. Uh, at the, the guys bank robbers. Who, yeah, the bank robberies, uh, the guys were in full uh, combat gear. They had the fully automatic rifles, and the cops basically had shotguns. In that situation, you know, people ask, you know, should cops have those guns? And that's not a situation I think a cop should have, you know, AR-15 or whatever a law enforcement is carrying to defend themselves. But I don't think the issue to solve this is just to take all the guns away from the normal populace. Well, and I think we really got to look at these no-knock raids. You, you have to end these no-knock raids that's because right. now people, oh, yeah, cops are starting to get yeah. shot in these no-knock raids. I mean, I don't have a problem with the police and, being armed. I have the, a problem with the way that they use their arms exactly. under certain exactly. circumstances. Yes. And so there needs to be training and there needs to be a, a, a level of uh, accountability when they uh, harm I use people my, uh, and it's not justified. I use my AR-15 to put meat in the freezer, so... Come on, you start well, messing with my belly and my food. But what about machine guns? This, this had a ban on machine guns. Our caller, it looks, sounds like he's Alex is a big machine gun fan. Living in Massachusetts, I don't think they allow you a rubber band gun, though, do they? <laughs> but uh, what, what do you, how do you feel about machine guns, Joe Biggs? I'm a big fan of them. They, uh, well, hey, I'm still here today. So uh, Automatic 50 cows uh, 50 and things cows, like that. Right? Uh, 240 Bravo, squad automatic weapons, Roger. Those things work out. I mean, I'm still alive because of those things today. I mean, you can hand a random person one of those guns. doesn't mean that they're going to be able to go on some random spree. The more complex the gun, the more harder it is to use, and the more you've got to clean it, take care of it. So you're not going to have, like, guys running around with big 50 cows mounted to, like, their truck going out and carrying out these complex attacks and, and like, also mowing people down. I mean, I had so many problems with a with a 50 cal that it was ridiculous. I mean, you've got to treat that thing like a woman, and, you know, it, it, it's crazy. Well, also, I think there's a lot of misnomer about it because people don't see, you know, the Stallone movies or whatever where he's, you know, using Mowing the fully, you know, fully automatic rifle with precision. That's those an M60, guns, yes. He's yeah, those, those guns aren't as, pre as precise as they want you to believe in the movies. And also, a lot of people think that any type of, you know, quote, military-style rifle is fully automatic. If you go to some place like Cabela's or Academy, those guns are not fully automatic. And they say, well, you can augment them into being fully automatic. We well, can augment bathwater into being liquor. You know, it, it doesn't mean that you should ban the firearm itself. You can do anything. You can augment anything for whatever purpose, but that doesn't mean that you should ban the firearm itself. Let me read one of the law's provisions here. This is the safe passage provision. Uh, was that a person traveling from one place to another cannot be incarcerated for a firearm offense in a state that has strict gun control laws, which I think is good, if the traveler is just passing through. Short stops for food and gas, provided the firearm and ammunition are not immediately accessible, and the firearm is unloaded, and in a case of a uh, and in the case of a vehicle without a, a compartment separate from the driver's compartment, the firearm must be located in a locked container. So when the carjacker pulls you over, though. that's you know, the only yeah, thing. Yeah, the car pulls you over, you right. don't have time to go dig. Excuse all you me, sir. Can you put your here? gun away? I need a few minutes. I need to get my key. I need to walk to the trunk. I need to pick up the spare tire and get yeah. it in this. <laughs> And, and, and then hold on, it's a smart gun, so I have to log into it. I got a three-digit <laughs> oh code gosh. I got to put wait, in. I've got to reboot. Wait yeah. up, hold on, hold on. Oh, I got the blue screen. Of wait one second. Wait, no, the sad thing is the way this is used. Now this so this is what I want to say. If these guys want the smart guns, the cops get them first. Cops get them first, yeah. and once yeah, they and have we'll enough they guys. Work. Yeah, that, that's, yeah once, yep. once we have enough guys who have the sweaty hands, it doesn't work. They got to mm -hmm. take the glove off, it doesn't work. They got dirt on their hand, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Then, if you want to keep it, then... I'll listen to you. I'm not going to go get one, but I'll listen to the your argument. interesting because that's what Obama awesome wants are. to do. He wants to use the law enforcement uh, people as guinea pigs for this. The, the, the cop the tryout smart guns enforcement act? Is that what yeah, that would be called? Right. And, and, and then what are criminals going to do? But you're going to see them revolt against it. They will revolt against that program. Go ahead. 
No, I'm just saying we've already had people lift fingerprints and place oh, yeah. them in other areas. So once that happens, the criminals are going to find that other loophole. They're going to be smart. That's what they do. That's why they're criminals, and they'll start lifting fingerprints on people and get their stuff. I mean, it's not that hard. That's right. You know what? I want a ban. You know, I think we should have the 2016 Stupidity. ban on giving weapons to foreign enemies. I think we should have that ban. <laughs> yeah, let's ban those guns. Let's, let's stop arming ISIS hey, let's not cut to kill one of our Navy SEALs yet, today. Guys. Yeah, let's stop arming El Chapo and the rest of these guys. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a Navy SEAL that died today yeah. at the hands yeah. of ISIS. And where where is ISIS getting those weapons from? The yeah. Obama administration. Let's ban right. that through Turkey, yeah, through yeah, Turkey, exactly. Yeah, through Saudi Arabia. That's exactly, right. Alex. We can't we can't come after Saudi Arabia. Alex, do we answer your question effectively? <laughs> uh, yes, you did. You actually exceeded my expectations. Actually, <laughs> okay. thanks um, to my smartphone. Like there's one thing we can talk a lot about. That's guns. <laughs> yeah, we we can take your. We guns. got a lot yeah. of people on the line. Let, let's go to the next yeah. caller there. Uh, hold on. Before oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Go, I'd like to say one thing. Sure. I've been a short-time listener um, since January, since New Year's Eve, actually. Wow. You know, instead of instead of partying on New Year's, I was watching you guys. But um, <laughs> oh, you guys, you guys have done a you guys done a great job. I know Alex doesn't like to be thanked at all, but you guys, you know, you guys have been my main focus on watching when I watch when I watch a video. I'd watch basically you guys most of the time. You know, you guys taught me a lot of things. And you cleared up my mind, such as global warming and you know, how, how communism is a bad thing, et cetera, et cetera, you know, whatnot. And I like to think that. Well, and this is good information to have. And I think it's information you can use throughout your life, whether, you know, it's the health information we put out, whether it's the economic information. Yeah. You know, we're not, we're not being controlled like, uh, you know, Megyn Kelly over here, not being told by their sponsors what to say and what not to say. And like Wayne Madsen, we're, we're journalists. We're trying to constantly learn things ourselves. There's always a, and we're not perfect. a flood of information. It's like trying to drink out of a fire hose. Sure. We're trying to find the relevant stuff, sort through it, and pass that on to you as honestly as we can. That's what we try to do. So we, we try to educate ourselves and pass that on to you. That's our mission. Yeah. So thanks, thanks Thank for uh, becoming a, a watcher and a listener. And yeah. uh, we hope you stay around for a long time. And let other people know. Infowars.com forward slash show for all the free streams. And uh, yep. I guess let's, let's do a plug real quick while we're while we're here. We've gone what two hours now. Yeah. I guess we had we did have our commercial breaks in, in the first hour, but we just did a whole hour. Uh, didn't talk about the products once. We had a caller call in that he like brain force. And well, we got all the prepping bullet. stuff too. Yeah, we and we the, have an uh, amazing deal right now yeah. on storable foods, uh, thirty to forty percent off. And let me tell you, if you don't have at least I would say a three month to six month supply, if you have a family of five. Do I have six? I have six. I have a family of six, counting myself. And, um, you know, I have my storable food. I'm not going to say how much, though, but I have a lot. That's right. It's great packaging. You can see those, uh, the packaging Those there. totes are really nice. Yeah. They keep, it's, uh, keep stuff fresh. Stuff and, in a Ziploc bag. Once you break that seal initially, you can reseal it for a short period of time. It's great packaging. It's all made in the USA. It's GMO-free. And also, we have 10% off all kinds of uh, prep items that are mm -hmm. is also at the Infowars store. Uh, we got some so generators, survival seeds. Um, you know, you know the the masks, uh, the Thyro Safe, uh, cell, cell phone bags. Uh, they're like little Faraday bags for your cell phone to keep it from being tracked. You know, the shortwave radios, the water filtration. Which I think, if you're not filtering your water in 2016, you are insane. Because if you think Flint is the only water system in the United States that's having problems, you know. I, you, you mentioned that you, you're you're crazy. My wife, uh, you know, we still have our our original uh, 919 area codes from from North Carolina. So we got a call from the county we lived in in North Carolina, telling us oh, about water. what had happened to the water supply there. Now we were on a well, but they sent this broadcast this message uh, out to everybody with that area code and said, um, "Hey, you know, it, it just affects the look and the smell of your water, but it's safe. Don't worry about it. It's just some stuff broke <laughs> off and got in there." And it's like, yeah, right. We've heard the same stuff in Flint as yeah. well as it. So now it's in North Carolina there. They're telling, they're warning everybody about it as well. So it's there a little, you go. It smells a little fishy. It's okay. You and, know? and the problem is when you don't smell it. Yeah, okay? exactly. Because you're drinking that fluoride. You don't know what's in there. You're drinking the fluoride. Harvard came out in 2012. And you can look this up on Harvard's website. Okay. They came out and said fluoride was just as bad as lead. Okay. Just as bad. And it's a neurotoxin. Just as bad as lead. Everybody's running around with their heads cut off talking about Flint, Michigan and their lead problem. Let me tell you what, fluoride's at about 60% of the water supplies in our country and they deliberately put it in there. It's not calcium fluoride either. It's hydrofluorosilicic acid. And you're paying get your for water it. filters. You're paying for it. What, what if they charged it. you to dump lead in your water? Okay? Oh, there it is. Oh, <laughs> Give you the taxes for your, for yeah. your uh, 
Yeah. That's Adversely good. affect the cognitive development of children. Fluoride. Right there from Harvard University back in 2012. <laughs> yet we're still putting it into our water. Alex, thanks for calling. Let's go to, is that Clovis? I can't really, my eyes are just not what they used to be. Chris in Indiana. Go ahead. Hi there. Hey. Yeah. Did you vote today? Yeah. I did vote today. I voted at about uh, 6.15 this morning. Who did you vote for? I voted for Donald Trump. I voted for a, uh, a couple of uh, Methodist Church members, friends of mine, who are standing up for uh, liberty for their God, proudly. Oh, good. And uh, I'm so glad we're all coming together. Our countries, we're on the right path, and we're, we're having victory in Christ right now. Chris, are you a right racist? today. Are you a racist or a misogynist or a xenophobe? <laughs> I've never been a racist, and I thought racism disappeared. I, yeah, I you, grew up, I'm 31 years old, and I thought racism disappeared years ago. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you that, because no you, you said we had a victory for Christ. I mean, we've had uh, Glenn Beck, and we've had uh, Ted Cruz's dad, and uh, all, all saying that uh, you have to vote for them or you're not a good Christian. Well, how do you feel about that? I found that to be very <laughs> offensive, to, to say the least. It is. Yeah. It's so offensive to me, because... God speaks personally into your heart. That's the fact that, you know, you can't really show somebody what you feel in your convictions in your heart. It's just you can't show that to somebody. But when you see somebody up there trying to use that as a manipulative marketing strategy, yes. that's so offensive to me as a Christian. It burns my eyes. It burns my eyes. I can't even imagine that somebody's going to stand up and, and be proud of their God for, you know, supporting these practices. You know, it, it sends all kinds of out of them for supporting that stuff. You know, Chris, it sends all kinds of red flags up to me when I see people publicly displaying their piety because Jesus warned us to beware of people who do their works to be seen of men and so forth and so on. And the exactly. very first, yeah. very first primary we had, remember what happened to Ben Carson, and that just validated all that mm -hmm. for me right there. It's like you know, I already had a tingling, spidey sense feeling <laughs> about this, as they say. And then that happens. It's like okay, there we go. End of story. I don't need to hear any more from this guy. And, you know, he never could bring himself to apologize or take responsibility for what happened to Ben Carson. They met multiple times. They even met one time. It was a very amusing uh, situation where they, they met in a closet at one of these uh, uh, things. The, the two of them, for a half hour, they were there with their uh, Secret Service entourages waiting outside this closet uh, while they were in there. And Ben Carson was not convict, uh, convicted, uh, convinced that he... Uh, had uh, was taking any responsibility for this, and and so that's why he he uh, backed Donald Trump. I'm certain. Uh, you're saying that Ben Carson didn't take responsibility for. Uh, I'm, not I'm saying Ted Cruz didn't take any responsibility for what people in his organization did, and 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 Ben Carson uh -huh. knew right. what that timeline yeah. was, and that's the key thing. Yeah. Oh, right. The the the, yeah, the with, timeline with was. Manipulous. Yeah, the timeline was 20 minutes before they started voting in the caucuses. Uh, there was a, a tweet by CNN saying, hey, it's kind of strange Ben Carson is going to fly back to Florida tonight. But he makes it clear. He said that yeah. in the very next tweet. He makes it clear he's not dropping out one way or the other. And so 20 yeah. minutes later, as the caucuses are starting, the cruise organization across all the different caucuses in Iowa put out that he was <laughs> leaving. And, and, and the Carson people in some of these caucuses started calling. The, is this true? Is this true? And finally, they put out a tweet 20 minutes after that. And said, no, it's not true. So for a full hour, they're putting this out. And it was clear because the same guy at the same time put out two tweets and said he's not getting out. So, he's going to fire. And they spun yeah. that around and then said, hey, we didn't know. We were just confused and so forth. And it wasn't true. And Ben Carson tried to get Ted Cruz to admit to that, to say he was sorry, to take some responsibility. He wouldn't do it. And so that was a very telling thing to me. It's obvious. I'm so proud of our country. I'm so proud of yeah. Trump. And I want to show, okay, I got a couple things written down here. What's, I'm drooling right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jumping up and down in here, guys. The dirty tricks, I don't know what's going to happen, but there's going to be some dirty tricks. You can just keep your eyes open. Oh, yeah. Uh, resistance is victory. We're having victory. This is Jesus showed us the way, the truth, and the light. We followed through. We're having victory. And um, I was on Wish TV 8. I marched with a snare drum and a flag. I was on Wish TV 8 in February. Mm. Uh, by God's grace, uh, he's a neighbor of ours. He's a anchor on, on our CBS local station. He uh, he's a neighbor, you know, within a couple miles of me. He's seen me out there since 
Um, you can look it up. It's uh, on Wish TV at Indianapolis. A uh, local man shows patriotism in a unique way on February 13th, 2016, um, and did a short interview with me on an 18 degree morning. <laughs> it, was so pr- it was so cool. A little bit of snow on the ground, and these guys were all about it. They, You could tell that they were so glad that I stood up and I was out there and they were able to do this story on me. They wanted to get me drinking my coffee and all the little bits of it, what it was like for me doing this and what I thought. And so you're not a summer soldier, you're a winter soldier, right? You're one of the guys that does it even I when have, it's not convenient. I'm very busy in the summer. I'm <laughs> landscape. Well, I do turf management and stuff, and I, uh, I'm i busy when the turf is grown, which that's cool season, long, long-growing long season. And so I have plenty of time in the winter, and I was like, we well, need to get... Right there. Now, you know, yeah. now, my friends, this is something I want to call about. I'm so upset that everybody oh, is so controlled by the media. Yeah, good form there, Chris. Like, we're, we're looking at the video. Our, our, our guy, our crew found it. We're looking at the video. You got the uh, Infowars stickers on the <laughs> snare drum. That's great. Hey, uh, I, I want to put this out to everybody here. Um, I get, I got a note and a text. Do we want to screen more calls? How, how are you feeling right now? How's the crew? How's the crew in the back feeling? <laughs> I'm fine. Hey, yeah. I mean, I don't mind taking a couple more. Um, we got three left. Maybe take. Let's let's take three more calls on top of these guys, and uh, that'll probably get us out around nine thirty. Sorry to. To stop you, Chris, from talking, we're just uh, doing a little housekeeping here. And um, um, but go ahead. Hey, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, hold on. Go ahead. You guys need to go to my uh, Twitter. I have some footage up right now. It looks like <laughs> uh, you know, Cruz loss is cool. You can see me. Looks like he's punching his wife, and then elbows are right across the face. I don't know what's going on. You might want to go look at this footage there. Bruce. And that uh, Twitter is at Rambo Biggs. Oh, 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 yeah. oh my look God. Look at that knockout. One, two. Oh, I mean, what, what has happened? What has happened to Cruz? What's going on? Like, oh. look, take the defeat like a man. Walk away. You don't have to start abusing your wife oh, now. Oh. First, first, Carly falls for Cruz, and then he punches out his wife. And I said, this is going to happen. I said, Sooner or later, they're going to be sitting there, you know, as, as uh, Heidi says, uh, uh, God spoke to her and told her, told Ted Cruz to run for it. I said, he's going to be sitting there in the living room and he's going to say to Heidi, what's going on, Heidi? I thought you said God told me to run. And she's going to say, no, it was Goldman. Goldman, Goldman you didn't Goldman. hear me right. Yeah. <laughs> well, she just got sacked uh, in the face. <laughs> can we just keep that on repeat? I mean, that, yeah, just keep it going. That is I'm poetic. sorry if you guys heard me laughing it's earlier, but I justice. Cannot... I'm sorry, you know, poor Ted. And then if you have you have to look at the other you have to look at Well, you know, Ted you likes to look at the other here. you know, that's it. All I can say is you You have to look at the other memes I put up as well where they're saying that, that Cruz might uh now that he's had to drop out of the presidential race, he might go back to his Zodiac killer ways. And then uh, I've got some funny ones up like that. I thought it's funny. His know. wife actually responded and said, look, he's not the Zodiac killer. Well, you killer. can see the Zodiac. You can see the Zodiac in there now. He's already started. Yeah. Well, she did see, say over the weekend, Ted is an immigrant. He's Hispanic. Yeah. You know, she said that. <laughs> ridiculous. I liked what, Tr- what Trump said. He said he's like the Keystone Pipeline. He runs from Canada to Texas. <laughs> Um, so, Chris, what's next for you? What are what are what are you going to be doing um, now that it looks like it's going to be uh, Trump versus Hillary, unless uh, Bernie can do a miracle bomb at this point? And I didn't mean that in the, I meant that in the, in the football <laughs> sense. <laughs> a hail mary. A hail mary. Yeah, hail he did go to Vatican, yeah. so uh. <laughs> it's going to be easy to beat Hillary. But I think the difficult thing is, I, I was thinking about like what I'm going to say. It's it, we, I think we have a long road ahead, uh, kind of like cannabis law, where it was turned over a long time ago. Everybody knew, you know, 40, 50 years ago, cannabis was probably not that big of a deal. But, you know, they continue to have all the money lined up against it, ministry after industry, and that's what we're up against. We're, our freedom cause doesn't make as much money, or they think, as what they have. I was at a friend's house, and he, freedom. he brought out this old magazine. I think it was Life magazine from 1951, talking about marijuana. And the interesting thing I thought about, because he had never read the article, he's like, look at this. And I started reading the article, and apparently uh, the guy whose name, LaGuardia, his name's LaGuardia, he was in New York. Um, he thought mayor. that they were, I guess he was the mayor of New York. He didn't think there was any problem with marijuana. And he thought it should be legalized. And he was, you know, shut down by this committee. But I, I never, never knew that. It was in 1951. Who knew? Like back then they were saying, no, there's no problem with it. But he was being pressured to outlaw it and then go after people who were uh, using it and smoking it. Well, what people don't realize is that the war on drugs is a UN agenda that we have implemented to the T. Mm -hmm. Richard Nixon declared the war on drugs and implemented the four schedules for drugs and 
That had already been done in 1961 by the UN. They had created the four schedules. They had populated the four schedules with which drugs they wanted where. And then 10 years later, we enacted it as if it was our idea. So I think conservatives need to understand how we've uh, used the war on drugs to take away private property rights. They need to understand that they're enforcing a UN agenda. Yeah. And they need to understand that it's totally unconstitutional. And there's that picture again. <laughs> that's if, a, if you're watching that's kind of creepy screen, to watch that over and over again to see the... Yeah, him hitting his wife multiple he, times. You know what? I'm offended at this. I mean, this this Are is completely triggered? unpresidential. Well, you know, he likes to spank people. This is uh, sexist and misogynist, first, isn't it? First, but, he's cheated, and now he's a, abusive Ted. I mean, uh, what the... Well, oh, he, he oh. told that kid, he said, you know, if you're my kid, I would spank you right now. And he said earlier that he would spank Hillary Clinton. So I guess he's under that, too. <laughs> so I don't know. But uh, people need to understand that about, about the war on drugs. And I think people need to wake up to the fundamental issue. Here's the deal with the they government. They want to tell you what drugs you can't Ted. take, and then they want to force drugs on you. Yeah, that's right. So that's not the mark of a good of a good uh, group of people. That's right. You know, that that's they right. don't want to give you any personal. Food. They think of you as their personal property, as their they slaves. Do. They do. They just she want to got dominated. <laughs> <laughs> she can take a punch, though. I tell you what, she kept the hug. I know. I mean, she kept her grip. She kept. I think they're going to go to the floor in a second. Ground and pound, yeah. right there. Right. I'd like to. I'd like to hear what Joe Rogan's analysis of that punch is. He's going in for his uh, his uh, his uh, bubble bath boy, his, his buddy back there. She was getting in the way between uh, one of the guys he met at a Ruby. And, and Fiorina's has already fallen off the stage. So, all right, Chris, thanks for calling. Good luck to you. Keep uh, making videos. That's great. Uh, yeah. That's how you get involved, and that's how you know that's what our business is: is media. Thanks for and, doing that, and, yeah. and that was great. You put the uh, Infowars sticker on the on the snare drum there. That's great. I'm surprised they showed the snare drums. Yeah, you know, they didn't. Yeah. They didn't recoil they didn't in horror. It. Uh, let's go. Who's next? Uh, Dwayne in Illinois. Let's talk. The Constitution is on the line. Go ahead, Dwayne. Yeah, that's all on the line. Uh, I'd like to say hey to everybody there. Yep, yep. we're here. Uh, hey, man. Uh, you know, if they let's talk about that marijuana again. If if they legalize marijuana, they just screw themselves because then they're not going to get paid for the fat trafficking the marijuana here in our country. And they're not going to get paid for pharmaceutical at the same time. That's right. So that's big money for them. They're that's in right. both them markets. Let's face it. You know, an interesting question still. for Trump would be back in the 90s when he was doing these interviews. I think it was a Playboy interview. Uh, they were talking about the war on drugs at the time. And he said, the way you stop the violence and the crime that we've got going is to legalize it. And nobody is asking that because, you know, we have these debates. We had so many debates with Fox News, CNN and others. They ask the same questions every election, every debate within each election. And it's like, what are your income tax brackets going to be? As if that was something that they really even had any control over. But they don't even talk about something like that. It's just accepted as a fact of life in America. You don't question it. Look, I live in Illinois. And you want to talk about the, the most deadest state? Everybody thinks I'm crazy. I've been a prison planet member. Two years now, I've been watching you guys for probably four. Um, woken up, everyone that's talked tonight that's called in, they're they're right on, you know, about you guys. Well, that's There's great. No Thanks for listening. Media. And it's amazing, There's you know, no you shouldn't be allowed media. to listen to Prison Plan TV in Illinois because, you know, Bill Ayers lives there. Uh, how dare you? I mean, that's got to trigger him somehow. <laughs> I'll tell you what, well, this place sucks here. <laughs> you, you can't do nothing. <laughs> you, you think it's 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 bad here. I mean, where do you where do you live in Illinois? What part? I live in Johnsburg, Illinois, and believe it or not, the Johnsburg Police Department here—they're like the best guys around. They're not out there giving everyone these stupid speeding tickets and all these dumb tickets, making money for their whatever they need the money for for their Humvees or whatever, but that's the only police station. There are county cops here. They also, they almost threw me in jail when a drunk drove through my yard in a car, smashed it all up in my driveway. Oh, and you had a problem with guy, that. The guy took off down the road. Yeah. Well, they couldn't find him. The Johnsburg cop pulls up, finds the guy that lived. He lived right down the block. Got him. <laughs> and they wouldn't even arrest him. The county. <laughs> nothing. No DUI. No, no nothing. No hit and run. 
Hell, if that was me, they would threw me in well, jail. David got rear-ended by an illegal immigrant who couldn't speak English, and they just let him go. They're like, well, you know, he 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 didn't they, know he wasn't supposed to run his guy. car. Oh, it was even worse than that. I was stopped at a stoplight. The guy yeah. pulls up and stops behind me, and then the light turns green, and he smacked into my car. And it's like, oh, okay, we've got to get out. And, and so... I put it in, in neutral, and he hits me again, and then starts pushing me through the intersection. And then after all this is over and the cops finally get there, they say, well, you see what the problem is? Your car is too small. It's like, what? It's your fault. What? It's your fault, man. Yeah. It's oh, like, yeah, it was my fault. This guy did that in my yard. You shouldn't yeah. have your yard right there. Who puts a yard right there? Yeah. That's yeah. ridiculous. It, it is ridiculous. Hey, but anyways, and I know you guys don't like it. Alex hates it, but we all say it. We thank you guys. Well, we you thank you. You doing a good job. And I want to say another thing to Mr. Joe Biggs. I want to say thanks to him. Not only is he an info warrior, but he's a true warrior. That's right. He is. And Roger Biggs, that. Thank you, you sir. You are the man. <laughs> thanks, you are man. the man. Right on. <laughs> All right. You guys have a good one. Thank All you. right. Thanks a lot. Uh, let's go to Bill in California. Uh, boy, my eyes are getting bad. Yeah, Comment man. regarding the Alex Jones Show format. Oh, okay. What? What? Well, yes, I, I've been an info warrior here for over five years, and lately I've noticed that there's an awful lot of time wasted during the broadcast. Somebody's put up flickering screens, and uh, we've got too much stuff to do to stretch it out with fillers. Uh, I'd like to see uh, Joe Biggs. Tell us something military every day. Let's talk about uniforms, insignias, vehicles, other equipment. Teach us. So, so the fact that we added another fourth hour onto the broadcast isn't enough for you? Well, I think you're talking about the breaks <laughs> that we're going to, right? Because I think what? what we did was we added some additional news or, you know, some production stuff that's there as opposed to commercials. Right. As, as, as no, what you're talking no, about, right? I, I understand that? that and I appreciate that. It's it's the flickering screens that do nothing. Are you talking about the screens behind Alex, the giant screens that we're sitting in front of right now? Are you watching no, it? No, the, uh, the screen that I'm watching has got all kinds of crazy f flickering images on it. I think you're talking about the uh, Stinger. Oh, before we go to well, quarter. You know what, I, I, no, no, I think you're talking about the big TV behind us. It might be your TV as well, the way it's picking things up. <laughs> no. I mean, I'm, I'm watching it on TV right now. I'm watching myself. With TVs behind me, and I don't see them flickering. No, uh, no, you, no. Hey, do this, do they, this, um, do this, uh, Bill. It's used as a filler uh, in between different. Uh, it's, he's talking things. about the, uh, the the voiceovers we do, the hot yeah. topics. Uh, and it shows a picture, and it, it just moves a picture around in yeah, the background. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. we're trying to make it interesting looking for people who live or probably a lot long, younger than you, Bill. Not to say you're an old guy. I mean, I'm 42. Um, you know, but I think what what. A lot, a lot of the flickering is supposed to mimic the human voice because we don't have time every day to set up a camera and do those one-minute hot topics, edit them, and get them on before the show starts. That's something we do no, in the morning before the show. That's not what I'm talking about. Those are okay. You're doing great. Uh, <laughs> but but we got to get to the bottom of this. All right. Yeah, well, Bill, this I'm is what I want you work. to do. I want you to grab a section or something on YouTube. Watch one of our videos. And send it to me at robd at infowars.com. Let me know what's flickering. It's and um, and I will look at it and I will get to the bottom of it. Because right now, I don't think, we're not, right now, we're not putting any, anything flickering out. Because we're not trying to flicker you or mind control you in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, we're not in trying fact, to make no, you have an epileptic seizure. We don't so. want to knock you in the face like Ted Cruz. <laughs> and and what, what, I'm, uh, what I'm getting is at right is, is we, we don't do call we this a program. Do? This is a show. We're showing you information. We are not programming you. We are leaving you to make up your own decisions. So I, I definitely against any type of... You don't of, uh, know what I'm talking about. We don't know. Right. Yeah. There's yeah. So, so much stuff going so, on, but you so let me know. take a screen grab and send it to Rob. Rob D at InfoWars.com. Send me a, a screen grab of what it is, and I'll be glad Everybody to take it. Everybody email them right I now. I really want to say... Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I, I like the way you guys do interviews. You have uh, some... Uh, what's the word? You, it, respect for your, your uh, guests that come in. And I really think you should get rid of the interrupter in chief. Oh. No. It makes me sick. No, no, no. Look, hey, the reason we're all here, there's some flickering right there. I think that might be what you're doing. That's called a stinger. Um, look, Alex Jones, for all of his faults, and he doesn't want us defending him at all, so I'm, I'm going to keep it short, 
you know, none of us would be here if it wasn't for him. That's right. That man back in the 90s got pissed off about what's going on in this country and decided to to make a change. And and he decided to carry the ball. And when you look at what he's built from the power of his voice, from the power of his interruptions. Um, and if you watch, hey, if you watch Fox News, they interrupt people all the time. People are used because it's a long form radio show. He's right. not doing quick bits of information that, you know, they don't, you know, they think he shouldn't be interrupting. But let me tell you, the reason he's interrupting 90% of the time is because he's trying to make more information come out and get more information out there to people. Man, he's and driving I the guest in a direction that the guest may not want to go. And uh, we listen to the guests because they do have a different opinion on things. There's nothing wrong with being different. Well, he let uh, Lord Mockton talk. Uh, yeah. Lord Mockton was actually a Ted Cruz fan, it seemed like. And he yeah. let him talk. Let him I, talk. I just interrupted you right there. I'm sorry. <laughs> But yeah, um, well, you know, the key thing is, too, is that, you know, I tried to get some things done through the Libertarian Party. And for 40 years, they haven't had a fraction of the influence that Alex Jones has had yeah. by himself. Yeah, he's doing something right. He's doing a lot of things right. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but nobody's we all, perfect. We nobody's always, perfect. That's right. And, and people have different, you know, people respond to different styles and different personalities. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alex understands that. That's why he's expanded the operation. So, you know, that's the. Different people have different styles. They have different programs on Fox News and on CNN, and uh, we, we have different styles and programs here as well. So, uh. You know, it, you could go to a new level if you had, uh, what should I say, more uh, gravitas. Uh, you know, uh, David, you're, you're very believable. And I really think you should do all the news and commentary. <laughs> You do it, you I, believe it. Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. But it, there's not enough hours in the day. Exactly. <laughs> so, it, exactly. There's yeah. just, uh, you know, and what we're doing here is organically grown. There's nobody That's planning right. this out. Alex comes in in the morning and goes, hey, did you see this? We got to do some stuff on this. Remember this? Six months ago, and then we got this two years ago, and I'm running around looking for video clips from six months and two years ago and trying to put them together before the show starts. And, you know, there's stuff going on. And I've been up since 3 in the morning looking at the news. And, and you got to have that energy and drive to keep an organization this size. It going really is. It. it is yeah. not easy. And now right. we, and now it looks like something happened over on one of the cameras. It says flicker cancel on the Oh, you're canceling here. the flicker. There <laughs> flicker you go. Cancel we're, we're canceling all the flicker on all the cameras now, Bill. I hope that'll, that'll uh, please you. But, th hey, thanks for watching and listening for the yes. last five years. We appreciate it. And, hey, we're only growing. You're only going to see more shows. Now we have three full working studios here, you're going to see a lot more of InfoWars and InfoWarriors out there. So stay tuned. Right. It's only going to keep, keep getting bigger. And thank you for your support. Once again, you can go to InfoWarsStore.com to support us by buying the uh, nutraceuticals, all the other preparedness products, especially get your damn water filter people. All right, let's 30 go. 30 to 40% off. Exactly. Is that key? Kelso? Kelso in Alabama. I Man, I tell you what. It's, it's the lights of, yeah. Kelso in, in right. Arizona. Sorry. Yes, hi. Um, it's nice to talk to you guys. I'm here in rural Arizona. Uh, first off, I'd like to say I take X2 and also the Super Mel Vitality, and it's awesome. You know, that gets bottled so, in Arizona. I've actually been to the, the, the plant where they make it, and it, it is really cool. We shot, I saw some cool footage, saw the crystals that are in the, uh, in the uh, safe. That uh, they bring out, they're they're literally in a safe, and they brought them out so we could show you the crystals, and then they had to put them <laughs> back. And uh, we put some on the hot plate and watch the gas go, and then they make the X2 in these giant glass uh, vessels that stir that are stirring. Wow. It looks like a giant. Um, I don't know the name of it because I'm not a chemist, but then they have guys that are that are bottling them and and setting them up, and it's it's a pretty intricate process. Uh, what Doctor Group has going there, so it's really amazing stuff. How has it changed your life, Kelso? Well. Um, back to the marijuana thing, but I, uh, I have a medicinal marijuana card and it really clears my thoughts when, and all day long. It really, it, the, the iodine helps clear my blurry thoughts if there is any from the marijuana. Ah. <laughs> and, um, well, that's one benefit also, we hadn't seen. Them. <laughs> you don't smoke the X2, do you? Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? No, well, I'll tell you one thing I do, though. I put it on a Band-Aid if I have a cut, along with a drop of, of uh, the colloidal silver. Put that yes. on, and I don't use antibiotic cream anymore. I've used colloidal silver on cuts. Keep but, them from getting yeah, sore. Yeah, that stuff's amazing also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really, though, the iodine, man, it really helps with with any type of... If you even aren't remembering anything, not do it. 
just the blurry blurriness in your head. You think clear all day, and it's it's amazing. And uh, then the next thing I'd just like to tell you guys is that I'm praying for you. And uh, well, thank you, Jesus. I want to just say that uh, Jesus is our authority for all men, and that Trump is going to be victorious because in Jesus' name. And I wanted to say that on air, that people believe in Jesus, and we will be victorious. Please. I agree. And thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I like the fact that he was a religious marijuana smoker. <laughs> Well, you know what? David Simpson is a, is a conservative. I mean, you look at this guy, he looks like the most conservative guy, and he's absolutely right. You know, we don't need to be locking people up. No. You know, Christians Spending ought money? to be the first ones to have compassion for people yep. and the first ones to recognize that God created this plant and he didn't make a mistake. And that's what David Simpson said, and he's absolutely right. There you, you know, go. It's, it, anything can be abused. We need to understand that. And the other thing is, and I mentioned this he's yesterday. Only. Yeah, I, I mentioned that. Yeah, exactly. Your iPhone can yeah. be abused. I mentioned this yesterday. There was an article on NPR, and they said uh, they were talking about addiction in general, you know, alcoholic addiction and everything. And they said, is it necessary to have a higher power? Because we've got most of the people who do this go through the 12 step program and everything. And it's like, regardless, of course, they're coming back from a standpoint of a secular psychologist and saying, oh, no, we need to have psychology in here. But the bottom line is, if Christians really believe that Christ could fix the problems in their life, they wouldn't be calling for the government to fix everybody's problems. And that's not just the drug addiction problems. That's every problem. And I, I am sick and tired of, of seeing Christians who have absolutely no real faith and trust in Christ, just an assent to it, who are constantly looking to government to be their God and to fix all their problems. Well, and you know, that's the source of a lot of our problems. If we had so many of these evangelical Christians who would come back and say, you know what, it's up to us to fix the problems and we can do it through Christ, he can change lives. If they would do that, we would see big change, but we're not going to see it when they put it all on a presidential candidate like we've been seeing in this this campaign. Oh, exactly, exactly. And that's why when I want to see the liberals get all bent out of shape about Donald Trump, I'm like, first of all, he's not going to be able to control everything you think he's going to do. I know you want to feel right. longer and think right. he's going to deport every person of color in, in the world, and he hates black people, and he hates Mexicans, and he hates Muslims. Well, they've embraced this said. idea that the president is a dictator is the, because yeah, the, they're fine they with want. Obama being, oh, doing yeah. everything through executive order. So exactly. I think every president's going to do that. And maybe that'd be a great thing for them if he did do some executive orders that they really hated. We could all agree that we don't want presidents acting like tyrants. There you go. Let's go to Justin in South Carolina. I wanted to talk about the non-children's... Uh, I, I can't read these fonts anymore. Non-citizen nationalism. Justin, South Carolina. Go All ahead. All right, go ahead. Yes. I'm always talking to, I hear you guys talk about Joe Bannister and, um, you know, different systems that are out there. And for clarification, I want you guys to elaborate on the difference between U.S. citizenship and non-citizen national. I don't even know if I can answer that. I can't answer that either. And let me tell you, <laughs> can you, you know, answer we, that? we can make these distinctions. <laughs> I know we're both. Okay. Well, you know, we can make the arguments from a legal standpoint, but understand that the judicial system is not an honest system, just like our elections are fundamentally not honest. Sometimes you'll win in that court, and sometimes you won't. Most of the time, you won't. I mean, when you go in and you make an argument, uh, for example, we had the uh, marijuana weed man who who. Uh, went for jury nullification in his particular case. He had one judge who just shut him down and said, now, I'm not going to let you show the statutes from the state of New Jersey about jury nullification. But then the next judge let him leave the statute sitting there on the desk as he represented himself. He did it, to, he, he represented himself. And uh, so, and, and he was acquitted, 12 to nothing. So when you're trying to assert your rights, whether it is the right of the jury or whatever you're talking about, it all depends on this legal system, and they can just shut you down and railroad you. I've seen it so many times, whether it's a tax case or whether it's uh, uh, some of these other cases. So it's, it's, very, it's very difficult to try to appeal to the system for your rights. I think our better way to attack this is to try to get everybody to stand uh, for each other with, with jury nullification, to try to correct some of the deficiencies in terms of jury selection and that sort of thing. I think that's where we're going to have more, more effect rather There's than more. making these legal arguments. More, more, more education to the public. Basically. That's right. That's well, right. What, what do you understand the difference to be? Educate uh, us. I mean, I mean, the difference that I've seen is, you know, there's a lot of groups um, out there, not that I associate with any, but I've over the years have looked in the multiple. You got like your Texians, the uh, Republic of Texas, uh, 
different people out there that are claiming a cert, you know, to say, hey, I send a certain amount of paperwork in just to say, hey, this is my right. Uh, and okay. become a national of the land, basically, that I was born here and the differences between the two systems. And right. then to try and circumvent try some to, laws that they aren't, aren't agreeing yeah, with. That's right. Yeah, and then they put the paperwork in and so forth. And I just wanted to get clarification on that because I know there's, there's some truth, at least from what I can tell, maybe I'm wrong, um, to what nationalism is uh, compared to, you I, know, the, I just the don't think you're going to get a fair hearing in that. I think you're going to have yeah. to try yeah. to. You're going to have more fruit if we try to get each other to watch each other's backs in juries. Right. And if we try right. to reform the rigged jury selection process and so forth and so on. Right. If people right. get con uh, confidence in the jury system, then they will go to trial. We can uh, protect each other. Things like that, I think, are going to be far more effective if you go in by yourself in that system and you try to make uh, some legal arguments. The judge, in most cases, is just going to shut you down. I know a tax protester right. went in and said, but wait a minute, we got that. Look at Erwin Schiff, father of Peter Schiff. Right. I, I've right, listened right, to his right, presentation right. many times. Uh, he used to come to the Libertarian oh. Party and stand on the soapbox and read the transcripts of his court trials. And they would just shut him down and say, we're not going to listen to that. Sit down. Shut up. Right. We're not going to allow that into, right. uh, you know, so they would just censor you. And and so, you know, there, there's other ways that we can go around the system that I think are going to be more productive. Right. All right, Give Justin. Myself, yeah, go ahead. Involved. Oath keepers, people, you guys, everybody keep it up. And thank you for the nutraceuticals and everything you guys are doing. God bless. All thank right, you, thanks, Justin. Justin. Let's go to Nelson in Florida, creating huge pockets of info, info warriors throughout the country. Let me tell you what, I have seen huge pockets of info warriors throughout the country. Yeah. And I have been traveling the country. I'm looking at the map right there, trying to count how many states I've been in in the last uh, four <laughs> or five months following this Trump brigade. You've been in a state of constant travel. <laughs> well, a lot with your son, too. He's been. Yeah. Been a good travel partner. <laughs> uh, but go ahead, Nelson. Yeah, guys, um, I had an idea about uh, doing the Woodstock like events. Uh, Matt, who was on yesterday, alluded to it last week about holding rallies, themed with music. And uh, I want to call it We the People Freedom and Constitutional Tooth Tour. And it will be hosted by the county sheriff. Just oh. like they host, uh, uh, you know, rodeos will be hosted by the county sheriff with the county sheriff there's hosting it, passing out uh, constitutions, representative from Oath Keepers, the food babe. You have the music. The whole day is spent with the families talking about the truth, constitution, around music. And, you know, I think that would be a great idea. And another thing, idea that I had was about when you guys are out at the rallies, you need to have, like, a truth truck where you can have, like, 300-inch screens and uh, show the people on the screen, the split screen, Alex interviewing people. It's a big target you know, for the eggs to be thrown at. That's what the, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, what I can just imagine what some of those uh, social justice warriors yeah. will do. Oh, the hate <laughs> speech. Go ahead, keep going. You can put flex glass over that. To that's true. Yeah, what, you're, yeah. what you're doing is getting it all on video. Sure. You're getting the yeah. action. You get, you're getting the people to see themselves on TV. Ah, that's where they get their information. That's yeah. even, that is good. Yeah. Uh, remote yeah. cameras going in. Yeah, it's a yeah, good idea. Live streaming. Yeah. You're live streaming. Right. But I think we really need to push this uh, We the People thing. You know, we got all these musicians, Charlie Daniels, Hank Jr. We could pull massive amounts of crowds yeah. around this idea. <laughs> and, and like David was saying, you know, we need to do this at a local level. So Hosted by Chuck Norris. The only way we could do this is to have a bunch of people doing it. That's right. That's the only way. That's right. You know? and, and there are a lot of good sheriffs out there. And, you know, that's an elected office. That's one of the key. That's why it's so important. It's elected. Uh, and you could get some of those sheriffs to come in there and do that with you in a lot of those areas, I believe. Yeah, Roy, and you think you could? I guess uh, Sheriff Max is a good resource to find out who's a pretty good constitutional sheriff in your area. That's right. So uh, that's a good idea, Nelson. Um, you know, we have only so much time in the day, and and putting together concerts is not our forte. We're we're definitely about making uh, videos and putting them out there, and and going out and asking the questions and interviewing the people. That's mainly our thing. So. If, but if, you get something going, I, let us you get know. Going, we'll be happy yeah, to tell know. people about it. That's what we're well, good at. We're going to get in the word out. Yeah. Well, that's where I, you know, that's why I mean, you guys need to help do this because you have the contacts for all this. You talk, I mean, Alex talks to all these musicians every single day. Yeah. It wouldn't be nothing for you guys to say, listen, we're doing We the People Freedom of the Constitutional Truth Tour. Help, you know, this is where the events are being held. Every, you know, once we get the, the, you know, the scheduling done and all that, you know. The scheduling is the killer, like let me tell you. Yeah, that You, you want to talk about herding cats, uh, trying to get five or six different, <laughs> you know, high-profile musicians on the same calendar 
is, yeah. uh, and I'm not trying to poo poo your idea. I'm yeah. just saying that that's a that's something you have to commit a lot of time to practical issue, and that's something that we don't have time to do because All I right. barely, you know, we barely have enough time to get the job. They're going in different directions, and they're trying yeah. to 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 uh, make money at the same. But you need, time. you know, some there. I'm sure there's somebody out there who's a good concert promoter who's listening to this, going, you know what? That's a good idea. Yeah. I know so and so who knows so and so, and we can get. Well, these I think guys it would on. work because you know. You look at some of these documentaries that have come out, they're, they're yeah. addressing an audience that Hollywood is not addressing. Right. And so if you could put together a, uh, a Freedom concert that is going to hit an audience. Freedom Palooza. That's right. You're going to hit an audience that other people aren't addressing. There's some real uh, incentives there for people to do that economically. I tell you what, that I'm looking for things there. to go to with my family because yeah. I like family right. events and, you know, I like to go listen to music, but I can't. You know, I can't go to these things unless I'm bringing the. You family. don't take them to the Burning Man. Exactly, I can't take them to Burning Man. So, <laughs> uh, you know, so so uh, you know, a family event. If people are pro family, let's have family events and have these things. Yeah. Make it happen, Nelson. Let us know about it. Send me an email to right. Rob D at Infowars.com or get in contact with me at Dews News on Twitter. It's D E W S N E W Z. We'd love to hear it. We'd love to see this idea come to fruition. Uh, let's go to Scott in Texas. Let's talk about the dreaded chemtrails. Hope you don't have any children, Scott. They may come take them away. Stranger things have happened. Listen, you did a great job in California. Uh, I can't believe those drooling lackeys. Uh, the first five minutes of your video I watched, I thought, I won't. How many of those people vote? What do you think? Is this real? I, have, I was thinking, is this real? What is going on? Well, I'm, I'm watching that and I'm thinking, yeah, Trump just won Indiana. He won the nomination <laughs> and he won the election. And the longer they keep this up, the higher he's going to go in the polls because it just yeah, validates it just, everything that he was talking about. It's ridiculous. Yep. Uh, I was calling in about the, the chemtrails. Listen, if you go to the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulations and you drop down the licensing tab, there is a license for weather modification. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. There is, and I've actually looked at those. Yeah, but it doesn't exist. I mean, why do you want to talk about weather Well, modification? and they have international yeah. conferences every year, and I, and I reported it uh, when it happened about a year and a half ago. Uh, they were talking, they, they had papers, and they said, well, who gets to set the thermostat? I mean, it isn't, <laughs> it isn't yeah. really an issue. I mean, they've got treaties about it, uh, saying you can't use it as a weapon. Uh, we know that they but have you can used do it testing, as a weapon. But yeah. you can do testing as long right. as it's testing. Yeah. Hey, we're testing on the uh, on the they, entire planet. Yeah. We're going to test pretend, the system. They want to pretend that they're not doing it. They want to pretend they're just thinking about it and testing for yeah. it and everything. But, yeah, we, we can see that it's happening. As a matter of fact, uh, talking about contests and other things, we did remember we had the um, – Paul Revere film contest. One of the films that was in it, the guy also created an app. It's called the Skyder Alert. And oh, yeah. uh, you can, Skyder Alert, look it up. I think it's probably still there. You could uh, take a picture of the uh, chemtrails uh, across hatching of persistent contrails in your area. Take a picture of it, send it to them. And what they did was they did crowdsourcing with it. They could notice that as people were reporting uh, these chemtrails in their area, they were seeing the temperature go up. And so these people who are talking about how we have to reorder like our economy worldwide because of global warming, they're actually maybe actually causing the yeah. warming in certain areas, right? They, they think they're reflecting the, uh, their story is they're reflecting the sun back up into yeah. space. Yeah. And right. what's happening yeah. is they're creating a blanket. Yeah. They're creating yeah. a blanket. And you can see right there, that's a actually Kim Trail's, uh, Kim Trail's stuff I shot. Yeah. But it doesn't exist, and, and uh, they're probably coming for my kids next. <laughs> Move along, nothing to see here. Hey, listen, um, I'd also like to hear Pastor Lindsey Williams if y'all could get him on sometime. Yeah. Right, uh, sure. Yeah, pass yeah, on definitely. Schedule. Hey, they said Alex has been live on Facebook mentioned. See if y'all can patch that through, and um, maybe we'll get Alex to kind of take us out here. Let's go to um, Dion in Illinois. Is Trump a liberation and supporter of the Constitution? Time will tell, but go ahead, Dion. What's your take on that? Yeah, uh, if, uh, yeah, I'm a libertarian, so I won't be voting for Trump uh, in, the, in the presidential election. But uh, are, are you guys libertarians and constitutionalists? Uh, so are you guys going to be voting the Libertarian Party? I consider myself a libertarian, and you know, the interesting choice that we have this time, and we'll have to see who the nominee is. I was not that impressed, as I said earlier, with what Gary Johnson was covering the last time. I thought that he was focusing on becoming a clone of the Democrats. His focus was on just legalizing marijuana and legalizing gay marriage and abortion and that sort of thing. And it's like, there's a lot that's going on that's affecting our individual liberties in terms of surveillance and other issues that I don't think they're hitting hard enough. And I think there's a lot of issues that they're avoiding. So from that standpoint, I see Donald Trump directly attacking the foundations 
of the surveillance state of Homeland Security, mm -hmm. and that is 9-11. He's attacking directly the official government conspiracy uh, story, and I think that is something that is very important. And I also see that he understands at the federal level, uh, and this is something that really is in the responsibility of the president, uh, he understands that our borders are being destroyed. He understands that our economy is being managed abroad by multinational corporations and destroyed. I think that's a very important reason to vote for him. Now, I don't agree with him on a lot of individual liberty issues. He's not, whenever he's spoken about individual liberty, mostly he's done it from an authoritarian standpoint. But as I pointed out before, we need to understand that on a lot of those issues, the president doesn't really have any authority to deal with it. And we need to deal with it and can deal with it better at the state and local level. And I think we need to flex our muscle and understand we're not going to solve all of our problems in one person in Washington. We need to solve our problems outside of Washington. Most of the problems we have to solve can be done by need, need us to uh, cons uh, put, a, put a wall around Washington, not just at the border. And so from that standpoint, I think it would be a healthy thing for us. Uh, to actually invigorate people if he does some of these authoritarian things. I think it would invigorate people who are both conservatives and liberals to take a more libertarian uh, point of view on some of these uh, individual internal issues. But for the international issue, whether or not we're going to have a country, whether or not we're going to have an American nation and a constitution, I think Donald, Str uh, Donald Trump is very strong on that. Hey, let's go to Alex Jones real quick. We got him on Facebook mentions. Let's see what he's talking about right now. Unless he stopped. He just stopped. Okay. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> He must have known we were coming to him. Okay. Uh, anyway, he had about 4,000 people watching him there at the end. Um, yeah, Dion, I voted, uh, libertarian, I voted Libertarian since 96. Uh, yeah. Every presidential election. Although in the primaries, I voted for Ron Paul. Because I thought he was the real, true uh, Libertarian. Me too. As a matter of fact, I ran as a Libertarian. So I, I take issues of individual liberty very seriously. I don't see anybody in the Republican or Democrat Party taking it very seriously. And I wish that the uh, Libertarian Party would take it more seriously. And I wish that they would stand up and uh, speak out on some of these issues that the government has used to establish the narrative of homeland security and the police state. Uh, they have put these things out there, I believe, uh, uh, to get people to trade their freedom for security. And I don't see the Libertarian Party directly attacking those foundations as much as even Donald Trump will. And that's what one of the earlier callers was saying, I, th he thought, I think that's a very positive uh, side effect of him confronting political correctness, uh, talking about some of these things like the secret 28 pages. There you go. Your taxation is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Do, do you think Trump is going to do anything to less, lessen the regulations for business, small businesses and taxes? Well, he put out his uh, tech... I think it was his whole economic plan, and people have looked at it, and they said it's going to raise um, spending uh, spending income. It's going to raise everybody's spending income between three and sixteen percent. Well, let me talk about which I don't even know. I don't think that's a lot. I mean, I think he can do better, but to me, that's yeah, a start. That's a start in the right direction. I mean, it's the, not nine trillion Court, in new taxes that Bernie Sanders is promoting. That's right. Proposing. The Supreme Court said that Obamacare was constitutional because it was a tax. Okay. And it is a tax, and it's a lot of things. It's a mandate. Uh, he would repeal that mandate. He has a very specific seven-point plan on health care, which I think is excellent. Yeah. What it does is it repeals the mandate. It offers incentives. It offers ownership. It offers competition. It offers transparency for people to see uh, how the health care providers are doing. So he understands a marketplace, and I find that to be very encouraging uh, when I look at the health care plan that was put out. It's very detailed, very specific. And it is very free market. And I think it would be a significant improvement over what we had before Obamacare. And it would be way, way better than Obamacare. So I think that's very important. So I think we would see some good stuff. It's going to be a mixed bag. It's not going to be whoever you have. You're not going to get everything that you want and uh, from one guy. You're not going to get it from any one individual. You're not going to get it from anybody that I've ever voted for as a libertarian. Uh, one guy isn't going to solve all the problems, and we can't look to a president to solve all of our problems. There are problems that we're facing right now, globalism versus nationalism versus national sovereignty. Those types of problems need to be addressed by the president at, the, uh, at, at, at that level, and he is the only one who is addressing that problem. David, Nobody I'm else sorry, I, I just got up. It. I had to go initiate some climate change here in this room. That's right. We have some... Uh, 
studio warming. They brought me some towels. It's like, hey, why don't you turn on the AC <laughs> a couple of degrees? Yeah, we need to wrap up these callers. Yeah, we got a couple more callers left. It's 947. We've been going uh, three hours now. And uh, let's go to California and Indiana. Thanks for calling, Dion. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Shout out to all my Info Warriors in Indiana. Yeah. Um, a couple of uh, three points I wanted to make was, have you seen this new Social Security ad about getting you to sign up and, like, create a profile so you can log in and see what your benefits are going to be? No, I haven't seen that. Yeah, check that out. That's kind of creepy to me. And then, um, you know, I respect Trump for not smoking or drinking, but, and David mentioned he had saw a video from years back, but, have we seen what his stance is on legalization and decriminalization? You know, nobody has asked that. Point, isn't it interesting that nobody has asked that question? I, I think that's the amazing thing. We've had all these debates and they never really brought up issues of civil asset forfeiture or the massive imprisonment that we've got, mandatory minimums. They never talked about the foundations of the drug war. They never talked about the fact that it's failing. And at the same time these yeah. debates are going on, we've got people who are in charge of it. We had the head of the... Uh, DEA saying that this is not working, it's failing, and so forth and so on. Nobody talked about that. We had a couple of admissions from Christy, from Carly uh, Fiorina saying, oh, you know, I had a relative who died of a drug overdose of alcohol, or I had a, a friend who died, Christy had a friend who died because he got addicted to prescription drugs. Nobody really brought that up and, and really seriously talked about that issue. So, yeah, that's a good question. And we really don't know where he stands on it because he, he mentioned that he was aware of that uh, 20, 25 years ago. But I don't know where he stands right now. Nobody's asking him that question. Before we go, uh, to, uh, just go ahead. Two more, two more things real quick. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about nonviolent felons should be able to protect themselves and own firearms? And lastly, I think Alex should be appointed attorney general so we can lock all these damn criminals up. I think that uh, if you're not if you're not a danger to society, uh, if you're a danger to society, you ought to be locked up. Okay. Yeah. If they've let you out, uh, then presumably you're not a danger to society, and I think you ought to have your civil rights restored at that. Be able to protect yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I definitely. Alex Jones so. for Attorney General. Alex Jones for yes. Attorney General. Alex Jones for Attorney General. I don't think he'll do it. Um, he doesn't like government regulations. <laughs> Uh, hey, I, I want to go to this one article before we take our final caller, who is uh, Tyrus in PA. Um, biotech company granted ethical permission to attempt to use stem cells to reactivate brains of the dead. There you go. David? Zombie apocalypse. Is this, this, I, I tweeted this out today. I said, cue the Walking Dead thing. I mean, is this going to be, is this what's going to happen? They're going to wake this, somebody up, but they're going to be not who they once were? You know, the problem with technology is that it's completely divorced from ethics. And just because we can do something doesn't mean that we should do it. And we have lost all sense of that now with uh, the genetic engineering, transgenic uh, uh, genetic engineering, where they uh, uh, take different species and mm -hmm. put them together. Cross. This kind of stuff, yeah. the kind of creepy surveillance technology that we're seeing. Of course, there's an article on Drudge Report. The data mining that they're using yeah. against us. Yeah, that Ted Cruz is using <laughs> yeah. even. But I mean, this report that was on on uh, the uh, on the Drudge Report talking about swallowable technologies. I forget wearables. These are swallowables. You know, well, I guess people will swallow anything, literally. You know, they'll, they'll swallow that all of this stuff is going to help them. I, I'm very concerned about uh, self-driving cars and using that as a control grid to track us, to tax us, to limit our movements, and to make us more dependent on some kind of centralized control. They've always been looking for a way to take control of our transportation. Nobody wants to ride their horrible public transportation. They think they've got that solved now by having independent, autonomous taxis, one at a time, okay, like your own individual autonomous taxi. This is a very dangerous situation. We see the confluence of Google, the car manufacturers like Ford and um, uh, Volvo, and then you've got both Uber and Lyft mm -hmm. are lobbying the federal government to remove safety regulations, and yet they're telling us that these self-driving cars are there for our safety. The whole thing is a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. As Adam Reichbar said, let's go to Tyrus and PA. You're our tail gunner. Anyone running third party? I think there's a few people running for third yeah. parties. Um, I yeah. keep hearing about uh, Jill Stein. That's who's right. running for the Green Party. And uh, But go ahead. What's your question? Aside oh, from yeah. That. I was just uh, curious what you guys thought about that. Whether, uh, you know, you think the Republican Party, you know, might conspire with the Democrat Party, put someone out there to get Hillary in. I had a bad feeling about that since, uh, you know, they don't want to accept Trump as their 
front runner, it seems. I think they're going to accept him at this point. They have, they would be, they see the writing on the wall and they see what the American people are about at this point. And I think they're going to concede defeat. But I don't think, you know, Trump said he's only going to run, take one four year term. I think that uh, people like George Will and others are going to do everything they can to overtly or covertly help Hillary Clinton get elected. Yeah. I don't think they're going to do anything in terms of third party. Uh, I would like to have, uh, you know, we try to reach out. It's, again, it's always a scheduling. We would like yeah. to get the libertarian candidates to come on and, and debate uh, some issues. And we would ask them some questions like some of our callers have been asking that are never asked. And we would like to hear their answers to some of the standard questions that everybody asks. But also the issues that are never asked, I would like to uh, uh, hear their response on that. I think one of the things that could come out of this election that would be very, very positive is to even have a... Uh, multi-party election. Uh, we don't have that, and and you can see. Let's have five. Somebody said we need five parties. I yeah. was talking to people. They're like, we need five parties minimum, and and that way you'd get more ideas, and you would get, uh, you wouldn't have this, you know, universe of power between two. Yeah. Between and you wouldn't parties. have the back and forth on personalities yeah. because if somebody started doing that to everybody, they would be the problem. So I think that they would focus more on issues. Right. I think that would be a, a key thing to have. And why is it? That we can have, you know, 30 different brands of cornflakes when we go into the supermarket to hey, choose from. But we're only like allowed, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> but we're only allowed two political parties. It's because these guys are criminals. They want to pretend that they're a monopoly when it suits their purpose. And then they want to pretend that they're open to the public when it suits their purpose. And it is a monopoly. And But they're running it like a racketeer organization. Yeah. Even though they get federal, they get uh, funding from the taxpayers to run their elections, they then come back and say, oh, but we're a private party. Oh, why are there 32 flavors of ice cream when there should be two? Republican and Democrat. Oh, man, yeah, they got uh, two different parties, but it uh, seems like they kind of, you know, they're pushing for the same thing. But uh, I was hoping, to, uh, hoping that... Uh, Maybe there wouldn't be a third party to maybe so Trump could have Hillary all to himself and maybe not get negated by the third candidate that kind of made, you know, maybe him or maybe it would make her look a little more bad. I don't know. But I don't think there's anybody they could put in at this point that can uh, command the media presence that Donald Trump commands. True. And I mean, right. he he really has played them to he's played them like a fiddle. The and, media and the politicians. And a third party is not going to be a factor as long as they maintain control of the debate access. And they're yeah. not going to let anybody into the debates except for the Republican and the Democrat. And uh, that's not the way that it should be, but that's the reality of the way that it yeah. is right now. Maybe that will change after this time. We've had lawsuits from the last time. Gary Johnson uh, tried to get that changed. They raised after Ross Perot was in. Uh, and he shot up in the debates. He shot in the first place mm -hmm. before they scared him out. Mm -hmm. After that happened, they said, no, we're not going to let anybody in unless they get to 15% nationally because they know that's not going to be attainable if you can't get into the debates. But we may have somebody come along at some point in time that knows how to use social media like Donald Trump, and they might actually get to 15%. Uh, but then they also know how to run these polls, too. That's true. <laughs> the self yeah, they do. It's, it's, it's all rigged, and that's the reason they don't like Donald Trump because he's... Uh, He's kicking their system Calling to the curb. All. And, I mean, imagine if he wasn't in the race. I, I guarantee it wouldn't be Ted Cruz who was the front runner. Yep, it would be somebody well, like Marco Rubio or Jeb yeah, Bush. Yeah. Election. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, we would be looking at another just crappy election, which, you know, it, in terms of us, we would be happy, you know, at that point, whoever <laughs> got in. Because we would, you know, I think be pointing out their flaws. And, and we're going to still do it if Donald Trump gets in and he's not. Yep. Acting oh, like a, a statesman or a constitutionalist yeah, I mean, or a nationalist. I, I never really supported him, uh, you know, back whenever he was just a businessman. You know, I mean, I, I never hated him or nothing, but, uh, you know, yeah, he's I can doing his thing. Who cares? He's the best candidate for the job. You know, he's a businessman. I mean, they doubled the debt since Obama's been in there. We need someone who can at least try or at least has a good chance to get that back on track. Well, we've well, given the politicians many years to try, and they haven't done a damn thing for us. Well, the thing that really bothered me about Donald Trump at the beginning, I was adamantly opposed to Donald Trump, and I made it very clear yeah. because there was a cult of personality around him. He, he was not being specific about anything. It truly was at that point, people following him because he was a celebrity. But after that, he has come out with some very specific policies, like I point out, health care. Uh, he's been under the tutelage, I believe, of Senator Sessions, who is the only hey, person with the integrity to look yeah. at these trade treaties. And yep. he's got his uh, former chief of staff, Stephen Miller, who's now the senior policy foreign policy advisor for Donald Trump. This is, uh, these are all very good signs. And Donald Trump has been authentic for 30 years. He's been talking about the problems with 
trade being uh, managed by these uh, treaties, managed by foreign organizations. So there's a lot of good things about Donald Trump. We'll just have to see what happens with these other issues. And, and guys, cue up that clip, um, Trump uh, cucks wolf. And, oh, yeah. Uh, let's play that. Let's play that. It's 22 <laughs> seconds long, and it really does speak to the essence of what Donald Trump can do when uh, asked a question. He can, he can literally kill two people with one shot. That's and, right. This is and, good. And he did. You guys got that one ready? Why do you keep attacking Megyn Kelly of Fox? Because every night on her show, she does negative hits on me. Every single night. And frankly, if she didn't, her ratings would drop down far lower than yours. <laughs> yeah, uh, he got Wolf, didn't he? Uh, Wolf would look blindsided, and I if went she back. Didn't attack me, his, her ratings would be lower than yours, Wolf. I went back and looked at the uh, the version that they put out on CNN, and they've edited his. <laughs> <laughs> they've edited that out. He goes right to the next question, like it didn't even bother him. Like he didn't even hear what Donald Trump said. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> as I tweeted that out last night, and somebody said I watched that live. Wolf looked like he had just eaten a poop sandwich, and uh, <laughs> you know it, th that says enough right there. He's not a he's not playing the media game. He has no respect right. for what they do because he knows they've been peddling lies. He doesn't bow to them. Yeah, he doesn't bow to their political correctness. He doesn't bow to their rules, and he's pretty sharp in terms of being able to think on his feet. There you go. Oh, hey, Alex Jones is calling me. Let's see. What oh, he has okay. To say. All right. Let's. We got <laughs> Alex Jones on the line. On hey, Alex. Personal what's line. going on? So. But, uh, yeah, I think that's a key thing that's... Uh, yeah, yeah, we're happen. still live on the air, actually. I, I just answered live <laughs> on the air. Do you want to Do you want to call in? Or you want, you want me to call you right back? Okay, well, let me let me call you back in, like, uh, three minutes. We're going to pop out of here, and, uh, and I'll call you right back, and we'll see what we can do to fix it. Okay. It never ends here in the info war. That's right. It's 10 o'clock, and I'm going to go work on some headlines. That's right. So uh, with that, I think we're done. It's uh, 9.59. Oh, it's 10 o'clock. Yep. We're going to turn into pumpkins. Thanks, everybody who called in. Go to InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com to check out all of our great products. They support us. Become a member of Prison Planet TV. If you're not a member already, if you're watching this on YouTube or on InfoWars.com forward slash show, that also supports everything we're doing here. And uh, get in the game. Because if you don't support us, our ratings might fall even below Wolf Blitzers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's drop the mic on that That's one. That's right. Good okay. night, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thanks.